So on track already for the RAC Pall Mall Cup. Uh, the very, very large entry. There's 43 cars altogether uh, on this magnificent grid that's been attracted for this uh, second Pall Mall Cup race of the year. There was one at the Donington Historic Festival at the start of the year. Uh, the uh, grid was set during some rather damp conditions this morning, uh, but it's uh, now somewhat drier. The car on Yeah, it's going to be a rolling start, and they're, they're under the safety car, the, the pace car now. Uh, the front row has on it number 27, which is uh, was put there by uh, Andrew Jordan, uh, but it was Roy, it is Roy Alderslade who will start in that car, the number 27. Shelby Daytona Cobra Coupe. It'll only be Roy Alderslade, the owner, and then Andrew Jordan who will take the car over. Uh, and they've got to make two pit stops. We'll, we'll get into the detail of the race. I did mention it earlier on in the day, but uh, the two by two formation comes up to the start line and accelerates away now up towards Abbey for the first time. We'll pick up the drivers as we go along, but Marcus will be able to get details of most of them, and uh, in fact, all of them, but we haven't got time to get all, all to you. So the Field now streaming through Royal Alderslade, remember, in the pole position car. Uh, Rory Butcher, however, is in the number 73 E type Jaguar uh, of William Paul. And Rory Butcher was absolutely flying in qualifying this morning. He's the much the best placed E type on the grid. Uh, a car that uh, has changed from being an Elva to uh, a Lotus 15, which uh, went well in yesterday's uh, race. This is the Lotus 15, the Sterling Moss Trophy. Uh, the Lotus 15. Number 160, driven by uh, Richard Bradley, Michael Birch and Gareth Burnett. Marcus, do we have a start drive for that one, incidentally? Yeah. Starting from the back of the grid. Gareth Burnett, I believe. Ga OK, Gareth Burnett goes first and in then, that car. Then Michael Birch and then... And uh, then uh, Michael Birch is second and Richard Bradley, Bradley is finish. third. Thanks for that. Whee! Oh, and that's uh, Lister gone round. A spin by the number five Lister Jaguar there, which uh, has embarrassed a few people. Uh, it was uh, started by James Cottingham, am I right? Uh, number five, yes. So uh, yep. a spin by James Cottingham. Uh, fortunately, some very quick reactions by uh, Rory Butcher uh, in the E-type meant that he, I think there may have been a slight clip, but it was James Cottingham who now, he's got three R's, so uh, between him uh, and Max Girardo, they may be able to make up that ground but he'll be dropped to the tail end of the field, I would have thought, as a result of that at Luffield. Wonderful view of the three yeah. dis uh, distinctly different Jags. Um, we've got the uh, 69, that's the uh, Cullen. Michael Cullen, yes, uh, in the red car. Red Cobra, he's just jumped out of uh, Alexis Cortina. Quite interesting. Very original. Couple and of very another spinning oh, E-type. And the Scriber, uh, Elan's gone round as well, but um, as got away with it. I think that's Will Scriver down at Beckett's. Will Scriver started in that car uh, and he's got go again but his heart must have been in his mouth there. It's but it was the 55 uh, E-type that spun first. That's at the moment Mark Burton at the wheel. It's not yep. his car. And from the back of the grid, the um, the Richard Kent 88 Cut 7, the Prothero Jaguar, that's had an engine change since yesterday right. following an uh, oil leak. So there's, there's quite a lot, there's in fact too much for us to tell you about in, in uh, one sentence. Uh, there's so much going on, but up front, we've got the number 27 Daytona Cobra in the hands of Roy Alderslade, put on to pole position by Andrew Jordan, uh, up against Rory Butcher, who did put William Paul's E-Type onto the front row of the grid. And at the end of the first lap then, that led from the number 69 the number 69 car of Michael Cullen to begin with. In second place then, and in third place over the line, but no longer in third place, the number six. Oh no, sorry, it is there, yes, the, the number six uh, uh, E-type in the hands to begin with. Uh, of we are down the order 66 right, number 66 it is not yeah. uh, number 6 yes of, of uh, Jeremy Cottingham that's the Lotus 15 getting on 
Uh, it's in 17th place. Now, that, that, did that have to start from the back? No, perhaps not. No, it's uh, started from the 19th row, but going well. There's uh, the uh, Porsche 904 that you were talking about, Marcus, number 35. Yeah, Carl's raced by Joe Sifford and company in period. And uh, um, Claude Sage drove it at Le Mans, uh, among others. In the hands of its owner, Rainer Becker, at the moment. Andy Prill will take the car over. But a wonderful mix of cars this race, this grid has. So leading the, the pack midfield there is one of the E-types. That's the number 44 car, which is being driven by Simon Drabble to begin with. Very colourful Porsche, number 53 of Christian Cole. Do we have a start drive for that one? Christian Cole, number 53. Yes, Christian Cole, yeah. Christian Cole, yeah, right. And there's a Ford Falcon towering over the, the GT Porsche and the E-Type. That's uh, the 77 car, which is being started by Alan Greenhalgh. But of course, pe picking his way through the pack will be early spinner, Jeremy Cottingham. And there, coming through, is the E-Type you were talking about, Marcus. Cut 7, number 88. In the hands of Richard Kent, to begin with. He and Chris Ward had a great race yesterday at the Jaguar Challenge. So, two laps now completed. Leading is Rory Butcher in the number 73 E-Type. And already leading by quite a large margin uh, from the number 66 E-Type in second place. In the hands of Jeremy Cottingham, who's come up well. He was on the fifth row of the grid, but threw into second place. And in third place, up to third, has come number 144, Guy uh, George Pochkiol. And in fifth place is number 472, which is uh, the redoubtable Mr. Griffiths uh, in the Lotus Elan of Nick Matthews. Miles Griffiths then in fifth place. And in sixth place, Roy Aldersley dropping back a bit from pole position in the Daytona Cobra Coupe, number 27 in sixth place. In seventh place is 31, which was, I think you said, Marcus Greg Audi, who started yep. in that car. Uh, and the Shelby Cobra in seventh place. In eighth place, is number 72, which is the E-type started by, well, this is where we're a bit mystified, uh, Richard Cook, we think. Uh, in ninth place uh, is the number 22. That's Adrian the, Wilmot. Adrian That's Wilmot. A new acquisition, that Shelby, one of the original uh, Shelby um, 350R-type cars. Right. And he started on the seventh row. And he's now in ninth place. That's good going. And in tenth place is another Shelby Cobra. It's the number 500 car of Ben Gill and Ian Dalgleish. Car's a, a US racer all its life, pretty much. The, the Ben Gill yep. Dalgleish car. The red, the red number uh, 500. Good to see the Hendersons out. There's a oh. breakage, 73. Uh, uh, the, in the right rear wheel. Yeah, it's uh, the, the right rear wheel is at an odd angle. Uh, so I'm afraid. The car that started on the front row, Rory Butcher, is out of the race. That car's not going to get back to the pits. It's not going to be repairable. Uh, so, great shame that, because Rory went so well in qualifying, put the car on the front row, almost had pole position, uh, led the race to begin with, but now is out of it. So, Rory Butcher is just about the first retirement, I think. The White Cobra in view, S17, that's the car that raced at Sebring in uh, the early 60s, and that's the Henderson car, out for the first time in something like 19 months. Good heavens. That's right. a, a very original yeah. uh, car. So into the lead, therefore, has gone the E-Type, another E-Type. This time it's the number 66 car we've been talking about from the fifth row of the grid, uh, with Jeremy Cottingham at the wheel of it. One of the DK Engineering entries, our, uh, yeah. uh, our, our country sponsors. Making amends for the spin of his brother James on the opening lap of his brother James getting on in uh, the 
Yeah, in the number five car. Uh, has five appeared in the... It hasn't yet, no. In the top 20 or so. In fact, looking down the... Oh, yes, he is. He's there seventh. Yes, so a recovery to seventh place after that early spin in the Costa Lister. And in sixth place, number 72, Richard Cook in the Shelby Cobra. Well, there's the Lotus 15, number 160, started by Gareth Burnett. And it's now running where? It's in, up into 10th place. 10th place in the Leprechaun, really flying, Gareth Burnett. Starting on the 19th row, and he's now in 10th place. Pretty impressive stuff, isn't it? Yeah, eighth at, um, they were 8th at the Spa, uh, 6 hours of the Elf BMW, so uh, the same team. And they're owed a win, really, after yesterday's disappointment. They were being chased down by Chris Ball, but we think uh, Richard Bradley would have just got to the finish in front and won the race yesterday. 69 there, which uh, is the... At the moment, Michael Cullen, Shelby Cobra. Safety car at the ready. And that's, I guess, to retrieve the Jaguar from the um, uh, from the hangar straight. I suppose so, yes. Before we drag it back, so they maybe get it going again, as is the want of uh, some historic races. Maybe, maybe. Well, it's not parked in a particularly attractive place, is it? Given that it's pretty wet offline still, and uh, yeah, get flung over there. Well, the lead is the white E-Type. Of course, that'll be uh, easily picked up as the leading car by the safety car. It'll help the cause of James Cottingham in the number five list of Jaguar. And of course, yes, the, the Lotus 15, Marcus, is now sixth, which is pretty impressive stuff, isn't it? It's hugely impressive. And, of course, with the bunching up caused by the safety car, they've got a chance of gaining some more places. What ahead of them is, uh, well, I say they, uh, it's Gareth Burnett at the and moment. There's some there's overtaking going on up here. At, um, Are they into the yellow flag zone yet? Have well, they passed the yellow flag? Safety cars out. So the safety so car, it's, well, all the, it's all the yellow It should flag be everywhere. Zone. It should yeah. be, yes. Into the pits. Yeah, you don't have to make your... There's no pit stop window, so they can have their first yeah. pit stop now and if they DD like. That's 300 coming in, the, uh, the triple uh, Le Mans Healy. Uh, Castel LeBlanc. Well, it'll get one of their pit stops out of the way. It's a five-minute pit stop. Is this going to be a five-minute safety car? Doubt it. Because it shouldn't be that difficult to uh, retrieve. So, who, who, it was Castel LeBlanc who started in the car, was it, Marcus? Um, which number are we looking at? 21. 21. That was Carsten LePlanc, yeah. and uh, Christian Ballinshot will take it over. And will probably do so now. Quite possibly. So the uh, the marshals and recovery team get to work to sort out the E-Type. Oh, cut seven's in the pits as well. well and uh, that is a change of driver. And so they, they've making their first stop. Now that was from the back of the grid, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, after the engine change. So Chris Ward is going to take it over now. And also ready to take over Max Girardo. Every guy has to make two pit stops. The gap between pit stops must be no more than 85 minutes. So you can't put Chris Ward in. Well, they've got to have a second st stop anyway. So Chris will now do the middle stint in that car. And we're going to have a, a particularly confusing order. We've got the leader there, or the ex-leader, being retrieved as the pack is led past. Chris Ward now behind the wheel of number 88. E type. I would have thought more drivers might want to make their first pit stop, get it out of the way. 
and then make it just one a one stopper from now on. Oh, good, nice shot there of the cockpit of the E-Type. Chris Ward sitting behind the wheel of uh, cut seven. But there's, there's uh, as I say, a minimum of five minutes, these pit stops. So they're going to drop behind now, but obviously the other cars have sort of got to make their two five-minute stops. This will be one out of the way. Just looking to see what else. Well, let's just, just look at the order again. So the, the, the leading car is the number 66 E-Type. With Jeremy Cottingham at the wheel. In second place is the Shelby Daytona Cobra Coupe number 69 with Michael Cullen current, currently at the wheel in third place uh, is number 144 which is being driven by George Pochgiol we believe to begin with and then we've got in fourth place the number five Lister Jaguar costing Lister Jaguar with James Cottingham at the wheel having recovered from his uh, first lap spin very well and helped by the safety car. Fifth is number 27, Roy Alderslade. And sixth, number 72, uh, Richard Cook. Seventh is Gareth Burnett in the Lotus 15, number 160. And eighth is number 31, which is the Shelby Cobra of Greg Odie. Ninth is number 500, the Shelby Cobra with Ben Gill driving it and in 10th place, number 472, Miles Griffiths in the Lotus Elan. So we told you that 21 was coming into the pits. It does look like a planned uh, on the spur of the moment stop in the sense that uh, it was using the safety car situation. They've got to spend five minutes in the pits, as I say, each pit stop. The safety car staying out for the moment, but it looks as though the Rory Butcher E-Type has been. There's the Healy going back into the race. I have the feeling this will be, yes, there's a lot of weaving around to get heated to the tyres going on. This will be the last, yes, out go the lights. Well, all kinds of possibilities are thrown up now. Whether it's going to be possible for Chris Ward to become a factor, we won't really know until the closing stages of the race. No time is added on, I hate to add, the uh, race will be three hours, including safety car periods and so on. So the safety car is in and accelerating away then to retain his lead if he can is Jeremy Cottingham, but being pressed strongly by Michael Cullen in second place. Gareth Burnett getting another place in the Lotus 15, number 160, by the looks of things. Into the pits comes 777, which is Guy Zissa with his uh, Porsche. He's got a little bit wrong there, hasn't he? He should have come in a lap ago or two. This is Unless there's a problem with the car. 72 is the um, Cook and Stanley Cobra. Winner recently at uh, Estoril. So here we go with uh, the Jag and uh, look at this. Oh, a big twig lock-up of the lightly loaded left front wheel of the leading Cottingham E-Type. 
Uh, Brother Cottingham is uh, accelerating down the outside of the Cobra. It could be Cottingham's one and two in a second, but uh, very, very close through uh, Luffield as the green flag's waving and the Lister gets its power down onto the apex of Woodcut to go ahead of Cullen's Cobra. Cottingham's one and two in this DK engineering race, the um, MRL Royalsmobile Club Powermail Cup. And it's going to be a, a change of Cottingham in the lead then now. So through on the inside, going into Cops Corner uh, is James Cottingham. So it's going to uh, make hay while the sun shines uh, and comes into Beckett's now. With brother Jeremy flinging that E-type around in second place, as Marcus described, waving a wheel in the air going through Brooklands and doing something similar to the rather faster Brooklyn. Uh, now, I suppose there's been some kind of consequence of the safety car situation because 72 having to come in, they've got to get the Cottingham's in the right place at the right time to take over the different cars they're driving. So there's the leader, there's the Lotus 15. This catching up is going to be in the lead before long, isn't it? It may well be, and uh, yeah, the Lotus is going really well in the hands of uh, Gareth Burnett, the leprechaun who flew at uh, Estoril. In, in this car. Yeah. Sporting a bit of um, uh, evidence of skirmishes there, and it's got leprechaun green paint down the side of it. In fact, it's tank tape. But uh, yes, Gareth Burnett up into fourth place. Of course, yesterday they had a great race against uh, another... Uh, cost in this, didn't they? The Chris Ward car. So two, the, the two Cottinghams and Gareth Burnett dives down on the inside of Jeremy Cottingham going into Village. And Gareth is about to take the lead by the looks of things as he accelerates out of entry. He's On got, to Wellington Strait. He's got Cullen ahead, hasn't he? Um, still. And uh, then the lister of James Cutting. The to lap was 47. I thought he just dealt with Cullen. Oh, you've got Cullen? Yeah, yes. he has, you're right. And there he is. Then second place, uh, the Pocho uh, Ford France livery uh, Shelby Cobra Evocation coming up uh, towards, um, towards Brooklyn's there. But there's our leader. Getting uh, uh, Luffield right this time. Yes. That's lapping the TVR, the 47 TVR Grand Tourer. Well, James Cottingham getting a move on to try and distance himself from the chasing Lotus. Remember, this has come through for the 19th row of the grid. Yeah, the Lotus, uh, which um, is, a, is a change of car. They wouldn't be doing this in the Alpha, I don't think. Yeah, it ran, it ran yesterday, and if it survived yesterday, it didn't do this race, yeah. So the costing lister lead the way, working away at the wheel there, James Cottingham. And where's the Lotus? Next into view, it should be... It is, much tighter line, isn't it? Uh, it's about half the length of the hangar straight, I would think. But uh, James Cottingham begin to stretch away a little. And also great making ground is Miles Griffiths up into sixth place. Three places gained last time around in the Lotus Elan. In fact, I think he's ahead of the Pochgiol Cobra as well now. In fact, there he is. <laughs> so Miles Griffiths is in th fourth place, but he's not far off being... No, fifth place. He's not far off being fourth and then third. Fifth. Th fourth and then third, I mean. Miles Griffiths in the Alain, right on the tail there of the E-Type. Switches to go behind the red Daytona, the Michael Cullen Daytona Cobra. He's going to dick them both, isn't he? He's got one. He's got one. And... He's around the outside. <laughs> oh, he's made Wonderful it. Stuff. Superb. And uh, an Alain can outbreak an E-Type at that uh, point. So oh. let them carry on with their battle, but passing the pair of them and now... Waving a wheel in the air as he goes through the loop uh, is Miles Griffiths in the pale blue Lotus Elan uh, in now third place. 
and chasing after the Lotus 15, Gareth Burnett. Lotus Elan, a car, Lotus of the 1960s, the Lotus 15, a car of the latter part of the 1950s, a spin there by the Austin Healy, number 58. That's David Stanley. Some great duels going on, little battles building up in all the way down the order. A wonderful sight these cars make, and the, thank you to the weather for turning on the sun for us now. Action replay of yesterday, really, isn't it? What, the weather? Yes, the, the way the weather's panned out. Number 60 is the car that's uh, been started by... This is the Frankitti car. Dario, I think, started. Dario started. OK, well, at the moment, that car is in 12th place. Yes, I think, that, thank you, TSL, you've got the drivers in the right order for the order in which they're going to drive it. in some cases anyway. Dario Frank is he shown as the start of the first driver. It's the uh, TVR Grand Tura, number 47. Oh, and there's the Cobra 17. Patrick Watts. Really famous car, that. That's Rory Henderson yep. spinning it. Running in 15th place, he was. May have lost a couple of places as a result of that. So James Cottingham in the number five, Costin Lister, has got the fastest lap of the race. He leads by 6.2 seconds from Gareth Burnett in the Lotus 15, with Miles Griffiths in the Lotus Elan in third place, number 472. In fourth place is 66, Jeremy Cottingham. In fifth place is 69, Michael Cullen. In the red, Daytona Cobra Coupe. That's in fifth place and in sixth place is George Pochgiol in the number 144 Shelby Cobra Daytona Coupe. The 17, uh, the 17 Cobra we saw was Michael Reed's uh, Reed's Racing Rats car from Sebring in 63 CSX uh, 2051. That's a rat race that predates the rat race is exactly. it? Exactly. Yes. Uh, upper place, up into seventh place now, number 500, making good ground. This is Ben Gill to begin with. Yeah, that's, the, that's another um, original uh, Cobra that raced a lot from the 60s through to the 90s in the States. Yeah, the uh, Henderson Cobra dropped three places as a result of that spin. So I think James Cottingham now having got in front... Uh, his last lap was a 229.5, whereas Gareth Burnett in the Lotus 15's last lap was the best lap of the race for that car so far, a 230.005, so lapping half a second slower than the leader. Uh, Miles Griffiths in the Lotus Elan has just done that car's best lap of the race, a 231, and is comfortably quicker than any of the cars behind him. There's the Porsche 904 again. Car driven by Rainer Becker. There's the, the white Cobra that we saw Rory Henderson having a spin with. Now recovering lost ground. Thirty-five, Rainer Becker running in seventeenth place. That's the car that finished eleventh at Le Mans in nineteen sixty-four oh, right. with um, Herbert Müller and uh, Claude Sage driving it. Filippinetti team car. Porsche nine hundred four. Seventy-seven on and there. Screen. It is on the screen. Yeah, seventy-seven. Not that far behind it. Just coming on to hang a straight, chasing after the fifty-five. E type that had a spin, didn't it? Mark Burton, didn't he? Yes, early on, yeah, that, early that, on, um, yes. triggered that spin. Yes, uh, for another car up at uh, Beckett's, I think. The the Scriber Land went round, didn't it? Yes, that's right. 
So 55 recovering. It's currently running, it, driven by somebody called Erton, uh, Burton, obviously, um, in 20th place, number 55. Is that a drive-through? It's not, isn't it? The, the white Elan, you'd like to think so, because it hasn't stopped at a garage. Yeah, it didn't seem to stop at a garage. No, it just seemed to carry on all the way through. Of course, we don't necessarily get information about the all the... Let's see whether we can pick up some race control messages. Yeah, stop go penalty for car 26. And that will be an Elan, because that's the type number of the Elan. That's the Chris Fox, Nick Pink. Who do you say was in that car? Chris uh, Fox. Chris Fox starting. Yeah. yeah. There's a drive-through. You say or a stop go? Uh, stop go. Yeah. I think I saw come up on the message. It's gone away again, but yeah, um, it's, it did say stop go for car 26. There are a lot of these um, Daytona Coupe evocations out now, aren't there? And uh, they're. Um, Proliferating in historic racing, more aerodynamic, aerodynamic than the uh, standard uh, Cobras, as are most cars. Indeed, as um, Harvey Stanley was telling us yes, yesterday, the half the suave filling us in, all that sort of stuff. Right, so uh, barreling down hangar straight at the moment, uh, the 69 Michael Cullen Cobra, the 144 George Pochgill Cobra, Daytona Coupe. Or coop. And a new fastest lap to James Cottingham, 228.5. Oh, he's spun. 144. Pochel goes round at uh, club. Ben Gill comes past, followed by the 27, which is Roy Alderslade. So it's going to drop in several places, that spin. Gets going again now. 31, Greg Audi's going through as well, and, and Nick sleeps on his tail. Yeah, the lead being built up now by James Cottingham in the Costin Lister Jaguar over Gareth Burnett in the Lotus 15, who is only just ahead, if we can see that, uh, of the Lotus Elan of Miles Griffiths. Pretty remarkable effort this by Miles Griffiths, but then we're used to his remarkable efforts in historic racing. So, yeah, the... Uh, for second place they're running they were across the line almost together and it may well be that by now the Alana has got in front so cars 160 and 472 are the ones we're talking about and where he got the uh, place I don't know but the lap times that Gareth Burnett is putting in Ah, uh, 2.29 is best, 2.35 is last lap. Has he been held up for some reason? Well, they had a little moment somewhere. Fourth is the 66, the white E-type of Jeremy Cottingham. And fifth, still number 69, the red Daytona Cobra. 144 spin, George Pochgill's spin has dropped him down to ninth place. Behind Greg OD in the Shelby Cobra, uh, number 31. Still hoping that we can see the Lotus duel for second place. which is apparent to us on the timing screen. And, and, another, and down at club. Another new faster slap to the leader, James Cottingham, a 228.003 now, his best lap. That's a great sight, three Cobras, one Coupe and two Roasters and an E-Type, heading down Hangar Straight. And as they came through this time, the ge yes, it's still going on. This, as, as I say, it's a shame we can't see this uh, Lotus battle for second place that's going on. 
because this time when they crossed the line there was only three tenths of a second between them it was a little bit less last time but the uh, car oh the Jaguar saloon in difficulties Remember, or was he just trying to keep out of the way I think he had a spoon Benjit Desai do we know who started that car Marcus from your list um, I don't I'm afraid near the back 49. It's one we didn't get a, a oh, right, one okay. for, I don't think. I've got a Janetta now. Well, the Janetta, the only one in the race. Yeah, that's a new build. A new build G4R. Went out for oh, the first right. time at uh, Spa recently. Twin cam, Lotus engine. Who do you reckon started that one? That is the Steve, that's the Ward family. Yes, the Ward family. It's Steve Ward started that. Right, here we have the coming down hangar straight now. This is what we we're looking for. The battle between the two Lotus for second place. Miles Griffiths in the pale blue Elan, hot on the heels of Gareth Burnett, working away at the wheel. You can see him do that vigorously working away at the wheel. To hang on to his second place as they go through Stowe Corner down into Vale. A couple of laps ago, they were side by side, I think. Certainly, the timing screen suggested that as they went over the start finish line, coming through Club Corner. Miles Griffiths making this Ilan go in the way that Ilans haven't gone since uh, the heyday of the likes of Jim Clark and Jackie Stewart driving Ilans in the 1964 season. Yeah, Jackie Stewart drove a chequered flag car, didn't That's they? That's right, with yeah. Mike Spence and uh, Jim Clark, the gold bug, with Peter Arundel. The Wilmont cars were pretty quick too. Well, y yes, that came a year later, the uh, John Miles John Miles, car. yeah. Came, well, a couple of years later, 1966 was a lot before the Chevron came along. And the mother clipped their wings. <laughs> Did you see that? Where, yes. the, um, where Gareth Burnett dived up inside the MGB to try and make a few, uh, steal a few yards over... Miles Griffiths in that pale blue he's, Lotus he's, Elan. He's pressing on Gareth, isn't he? He's not. Uh, oh, he's a he's a rapid pilot, the Leprechaun. Well, yeah, we, we remember he first came to prominence at the Silverstone Historic Festival, driving a Talbot, didn't he? No, he first came to prominence well, on, back he? in. He, he, he raced all sorts of things years back. I remember him well, in the production saloons ago. with the Nissan. Oh, okay. I raced against right. him in Classic Formula Three. Oh, okay. He beat me at Brands Hatch by about three or four yards in a 1600 Epic. Not many people knew that, Marcus, but now many more people do. <laughs> he was in a Palazza, I was in the GRD. Right. So the two Lotus there, as they looks at the moment as though, by dint of his hard work, Gareth Burnett uh, is just about maintaining his position. Two types of Cobra together, the 69 car. Battle for position, that is, Cullen it and is, Gill. Yes. Yeah, now, where do you start on the grid, Ben Gill? You started on the seventh row. Yeah, car 500. Yeah. So he's come up well, Ben Gill. Ooh, drive for the inside line there. Had the door shut in his face. Slammed on the brake. What locked a wheel, tyre smoke. And he's dropped back a length or two as a result. That's all at Cops Corner. Car oh, and uh, down the pit lane comes the MGB number two with the bonnet detached it's got some connection with the car but uh, doesn't give the driver much chance to see what's going on ahead of him and 36 MGB is coming off the grass elsewhere now two this was started by Josh Bromley I think you reckon that's I think what they said um, 73 use is very interesting in the pits. The uh, the Rory Butcher oh, car, yeah. they've taken it back to the pits and uh, they've replaced the drive shaft and it's going again. Oh, oh that's Miles Griffiths in the gravel uh, in the 472, is it not? And that's not coming out in a hurry. That's uh, at club, Exeter Club, is it? Yes. Yes, it's just before the finish, uh, the finish line. So... Got stage fright. Too much being shown on the picture on the uh, pictures anyway the Alain is well immersed uh, immersed in the gravel uh, and that's probably going to generate another safety car I would have thought 
because that car is, a, is in a fairly vulnerable position. Got a 911 battle going on here. 777. This is, this is this a car, isn't it? And the yellow car. They've gone the, each side of the Squire Mustang. 53 is the uh, other uh, Porsche. By the looks of things. Yes, it's down in, it's, it's almost last actually, number 41. Yeah. No, number 777 70, means 41st. Christian Cole and the other, um, in the yellow Porsche. Healy 100 behind, then the Squire, I think, uh, the Ro Ross Jones uh, Triumph TR4. Not no. Not Ross Jones himself, that's not again. The Jerry of Marshall's um, trying in vain. Well, they uh, give it a good go, but I think it's going to necessitate a recovery vehicle, and that, given where it is, I would have thought will call for the safety car. That's going nowhere. And, yeah, that, that, that's in a dodgy place. The, the, the lead at the moment... If the screen will cooperate, maybe we'll have to do this. Yeah, the lead at the moment. Uh, oh, in fact, Gareth Burnett has just done the fastest lap of the race, 227.810. Not got yet. The Cobra's side by side under yeah. the hangar. Yeah, 15 seconds is the lead that James Cottingham has. The two Cobras side by side, and Ben Gill goes through. Yes, because he made sure very, very uh, cleverly that 69 Michael Cullen, the Irishman, was uh, kind of blocked behind the Janetta that side of the circuit now they're going to go each side of the Janetta I suspect coming down they do and Cullen's got back and uh, he's got back ahead and the yellow uh, the oh, yeah. waved you can't get back under the gate wave did that flag uh, come before the overtake or the other way around Ian uh, well that was double wave yellows I would have thought there'd be a yellow flag before that as well but yeah uh, it's because of this obviously yeah. uh, so it's quite a long way off isn't it but nonetheless, in a dangerous place. Oh, he, he, well, don't worry, yeah, it's got to be, have, uh, he shouldn't have overtaken there. Well, anyway, Michael Collins has got through. Uh, Miles Griffiths walks away. Disappointed, I think, is probably the way to put it. And a door off the car. I think it, that they've just carried the door away. Well, that had any relevance to the incident. You have to read about in Autosport next week. Someone might know. This battle continues. The two, sh the two different shaped Cobras, Ben Gill on the inside, Michael Cullen on the outside. Ben Gill's been passed, got past at Stowe last time, has been repassed, uh, going past the pit entrance. Nice little battle, this, isn't it? It is, it's super. And that, uh, that Ben Gill car is, uh, is very cool. Now, the uh, Alderslade Daytona Cobra is in. And I think this is a, a, a planned stop. It'll be handed over to Andrew Jordan, and he will make that car fly. Yeah, the... Um Ben Gill's car, they're looked after by uh, Simon Blake's team. Uh, number 500 is uh, CSX 2349, a long-term uh, SCCA racer in the States. Cullen Daytona, a modern rep. Well, at the moment, we seem to be avoiding the need for a safety car, so the, the race continues, and the, the, the lead that James Cottingham has over Gareth Burnett, 16.8 seconds last time through. Gareth had that one very quick lap, but has now settled back into a slightly slower lap time. There's the Morgan in, number 93. Is that uh, the Wenman car? It is David Wenman driving it to start with. And uh, Andrew Wenman due to take it over. Bumping into each other.
I thought I saw somewhere that refu oh, refueling is, for, is, is essential, yes, for this. They, they've got to refuel at one point during the race, one refueling stop, I think they're going to have. Well, the, the, the land is being left where it is, it seems. That's Gregoire Audi, the uh, French licensed Lebanese racer. There's uh, David Wenman just chatting to uh, his son. Andrew in the background. Do they not have their Jaguars anymore? David Wayman, of course, I think, had I think a they have various they had a collection of Jaguars. One point. A Connors as well, that's right. 26 back in again. That's the Fox and Pink Elan. Served that stop go earlier on. This could well be. I mean, there's, as I said earlier, no pit stop window as such, so cars will be coming in. At varying times, this could be the first routine stop. Yeah, we're 45 minutes into this race, and the beautiful Porsche 904, the Scuderia Filippinetti car, comes in behind of Rainer Becker, the German restaurateur based in London. It was a remarkable car, that it was the 1964 Monte Carlo Rally or the 1965? I think Oregon it was the Finished second. He did. Yes. Was he a hotelier? Yes, yeah. in Stuttgart. Stuttgart Hotelier. So there's the 66 E Type Jeremy Cottingham. This was a car that in was raced third in place. the States. That yeah. was, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a Huffaker team car. Huffaker being a uh, noted tuner. Uh, those wave yellows are still there, the double yellows at uh, the approach to uh, Club Corner. Maybe they, ha they don't want to use the safety car until a recovery vehicle's in position. Yeah, here we are, there we are. But they're going to do it under, yes, by the looks of things. They're going to have a snatch under a full course or a, a yellow in the area There's where this has happened. Yes, three four wheels. inches of, we uh, of light under the front uh, wheel of. Um, Jeremy Cottingham's car there. A touring the, car tussle. Yes, the, the two touring cars in the race. The Alton's got its claws sound. out. And so is the Jaguar. And here comes the uh, low drag coupe behind. The leader on the left of your screen. Porsche in. Yes, we seem to reach the stage in the race, Marcus, I think, where quite a lot of the teams have planned for their pit stop, their first pit stop. And then the driver who takes over now does the middle stint. Can drive up to 80 minutes, isn't it? Yeah, 80, 85, I think. Is the 85, limit, actually, yes. Is the, uh... oh, that's 55 getting on. Recurring from its early misdemeanor. Uh, in 14th, now 13th place. Ben Gill now up into fourth place in the 500. Cobra. A lovely um, E type tussle. And that's the quick car, that's the butcher car, isn't it, that um, had the drive shaft replaced. Let's see if they can find out how many laps behind it is. Car 73 on your screens. Chasing Mark Burton in Martin Melling's low drag coupe. Yeah, he's, he's only done, he's 12 laps behind. But over the remaining duration, he could well recover a lot of that time, although it won't always be Roy Butcher all the way through. Well, the refueled Morgan is uh, ready to go again. Just waiting to for that five minutes to elapse before it's allowed back out into the fray. 71, Dr. Alan Ross-Jones appears in his Triumph TR4 into the pits. He's got his son Daniel and uh, Mark Hales, the uh, redoubtable racer, writer and uh, um, instructor, coach, driver coach. So it'll be Daniel Ross-Jones in the car next. I believe so. 
Well, they're still working away at extricating the lotus land. The Miles Griffiths planted in the gravel. <laughs> the lead's going up a little now. It was hovering around 15 seconds or so. It's now going up to 17.6, first to second, between James Cottingham and Gareth Burnett. Potriol's got past uh, Cullen in the battle of the uh, Cobras here. The Ford right. France livery car, 144 of George Potchel locking a wheel there, sliding a bit wide as a result. Cullen comes up alongside, they, do they touch? They may well have done. Precious close if they didn't. A few years ago, Michael Cullen and Paddy Shovlin were members of the Corsa Clienti Ferrari Formula One. That's right. Uh, fun and games you could have at various events during the course of the year in uh, a, a late model Formula One Ferrari. If you wanted um, monogrammed fireproof underwear, that was uh, your way of getting it. Fresh for every event. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the cost was of uh, buying the opportunity for yourself. A bit like going into space, I think. Yes, not quite as expensive, hopefully. Uh, Dario Franchitti's progress, incidentally, the number 60 E type, is now in ninth place. And he is running close behind the Audi Cobra, number 31. So Dami has the prospect of another place gain or two. His class rival is way up the road in third place, the Cottingham Stanley car. So 144 there, George Potchkel recovering from a spin, followed closely by 69. Yeah, he's got past um, Cullen. Oh, well, there's the bonnetless uh, oh, there, MGB. Yes. Won't do a lot for the arrow, will it? No, but it's uh, otherwise satisfactory. Unless somebody starts dropping things in there. From the height. So Cottingham in the list of leads. That um, that 9/11 battle has uh, been rejoined with uh, Carl in 53 ahead of uh, Zisser in 777. I think they're different laps, though, aren't they? Oh, no, they are together. Yeah, so they're fighting over seventh place in Class 3B and 34th place overall. What have we got now? That's Dario Franchitti coming into the pits and he's handing over to Gregor Fiskin, his uh, fellow Scott. Oh, Dario can now put his feet up. Well, he's uh, worked his brakes hard, hasn't he? Proudly wearing the BRDC shield. Yes. All three drivers aboard. Yes, it's, I think, the only car in the race that has three BRDC members. A bit like sort of three lines on a shirt, isn't it? It's sort of uh, yes. three shields on a car. Yeah, it's the, it's the only car that uh, is complete BRDC membership. And although Gricka Fiskin, better known for his exploits in historic racing, he has quali he qualified for his membership through modern stuff in uh, the Mont prototypes and the like. And British GT. Well, we're heading towards the one hour mark, uh, and out front now, 22 seconds in front, is the number five cost in this Jaguar of uh, James Cottingham. 
followed by the Lotus 15, number 160 of Gareth Burnett at the moment. In third place is 66, the E-type Jaguar of Jeremy Cottingham. In fourth place, but now in the pits, is, is just coming to the pits, the 69 Daytona Cobra Coupe of Michael Cullen. And up into fourth place in his place comes the number 144 Shelby Cobra Coupe. George Potchkill, which must be due for a pit stop fairly soon, I would have thought. In fifth place is 361, the Shelby Cobra, which began the race in the hands of Nick Sleep. And in sixth place is number 31, Greg Audi's Cobra. Seventh, this is the first of the smaller cars now, if you just count the Lotus 15. Uh, the Lotus Elan in seventh place. And uh, we've got a chance to uh, hear from Dario Franchitti. Hello, Dario. Hello, Lewis. Thank you very much there, Ian. Yeah, just jumped out of the car. The 60 car is Dario Ken Franchitti. Three-time Indy winner. We don't, we don't see many of them here at Silverstone. It depends where you hang out. You'd be surprised. <laughs> ah, brilliant day. What a, what, a, what a load of fun we're having. Uh, what was conditions like? Uh, drying up, a um, couple of damp patches still, but um, most of the track was actually dry. There was just a couple of little bits to catch out, exit of Maggots Beckett's for instance, so um, otherwise, no, very good. Um, the old E-type was lovely, just not quick enough in a straight line to go by the Cobras, but uh, it didn't diminish the fun I was having, it was really good fun. Yeah, yeah I noticed the, that there's a dry line on the track, but obviously if you have to pass anything, you've got to get offline. Is that tricky? Yeah, I mean, that is a problem, but even online at some places, um, it just you hit you hit a bit of, uh, you know, a bit, a bit of like a, just a little damp patch online and the car will slide, so just gotta, you've really got to sort of plan ahead for that a bit, um, get it to some amazing angles of drift, <laughs> which normally I can't do without crashing, so it was quite good fun to, uh, to do that. Yeah, normally you're sort of very precise on ovals, this, that and the other, but uh, obviously with the E-Type you're allowed to uh, just to, um, be a bit more exuberant. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, sideways isn't generally the fast way, but um, occasionally, when, I see when you hit a damp patch, you get some pretty good angles, and um, you know, my inner voice is uh, is more about having fun today than going quick. So uh, yeah, I was letting it uh, letting it drift around a little bit. So, uh, got any more plans to you know in the future to do more historic racing? Yeah, I mean, I've done a, a good bit now with Gregor and his Cobra at Goodwood. Um, I've done a you know, drove a GT40 at Goodwood recently, which was just a dream. So yeah, if I can do some more, uh, I probably will. Well, that's great. And uh, looks like the car 60 is about to go out with Gregor. So, uh, uh, are your brother back in? Yeah, he, Marino's going in at the end. Um, so uh, my job was just not to lose too much time being the, being the rookie in the team. So, um, mission accomplished. Okay, thanks very much. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Lewis. Uh, but uh, new to this team, yes. We, yes, the Lotus Elan I was talking about, the, the Scriver car, which is uh, started by Will Scriver, we reckon, 149, running now in ninth place, ahead of the number 55 Cobra. So up into seventh place has come that uh, Lotus Elan. Helped, of course, by the pit stop for the Dario Franchitti, uh, now Gregor Fiskin E-type. And I think the 500 must have stopped as well, the Ben Gill Cobra. It's missing, isn't it? Yeah, that hasn't appeared for a while, but it may um, have uh, made a stop. The well, it wouldn't bigger. drop this far down, I don't think, if it had made just... Uh, it's 20, so it's 26. And has come out, yes, so it's dropped that uh, quite a long way as a result of its pit stop. But remember, these are five minute pit stops. The mandatory ones have to have two. Now, how's Chris Ward getting on? Up into 15th place. Remember, that car had a very early first stop under the safety car, and Chris Ward's been pressing on with it, and he's uh, 15th at the moment, number 88 E type. Now, why is the 27, the oldest laid Andrew Jordan car so far down? Can we remember a reason? Well, we reckon it could be the pit stop, but it's dropped it a long way down the order. 
Anyway, there's Chris Ward now at the two Jaguars, the saloon, about to be lapped by the fixed head coupe E type. And I'm sure Chris Ward's very much enjoying himself because all they can do is press on to as good an effect as possible to try and make up for that time lost early on. They've got a better chance of recovering a good position than has the car that was started by Rory Butcher, the number 73 car, which is back out now in the hands of William Paul. It'll be Andy Prill now in the Porsche 904, having uh, graduated yes. from Pandora. Oh, right. So uh, the number 80 type down the pit lane, that's John Clark to hand over to Gordy Much. Now that should be... Yeah, it was in seventh place. So that car's got... I know it's helped a little bit by pit stop uh, ahead of it, but nonetheless, that car's in the top ten. Yep, there's, and there's March climbing out of it. Yes, yeah, so John Clark will take it over. Gordy having started the race. John Clark, hugely experienced driver. These days of historic cars, these many days, but uh, previously raced in the British Touring Car Championship in the BMW. One of the cars in the, uh, in the pit lane is the Ward family Ginetta G4R. Replica of the car that raced in Canada in period with a Lotus twin cam engine. There is the uh, Much and Clark E type. It looks lovely, doesn't it? it? Does. The, the, the fixed head coupe, I still think, is the better shape. We we'll always think that. No, uh, no driver aboard, of course, while refueling. Indeed. George Potchgold has just done, in the car that's currently in fourth place, the 144 Cobra has just done that car's best lap. And he's followed by another Cobra that's just done its best lap, the number 361. Which is Nick Sleep, I think I'm right to say, to begin with. It's yet to stop that car. Yeah. That's the clone of the uh, um, Hairy Canary, the yeah. Dyna Glazer right. Hawaii car. It's got the real one, but that's the clone. But the real one has raced in the UK, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. He has it, but he's running. Oh, right. Oh, OK. And Ben Gill, the, the Ben Gill 500 Cobra is back out on track. Now in the hands of uh, Ian Dalgleish, Canadian. Leader on your screens, representing uh, our event sponsor, DK Engineering. David and Kate Cottingham founded that back in the 1970s, and this is uh, their son, James. Doing a very good job. He got that spin out of his system on the first lap and has been pressing on to very good effects subsequently. Yeah, and he's got Massimiliano Girardo to take it over. What's his pace going to be like? Uh, pretty decent. I mean, he, he races the Cobra uh, uh, pretty well and uh, races the Tasha with another SP1 Judd. So really, the, uh, the way things are going, Unless some glitch occurs, they are looking I, good. I suspect the Max Gerardo won't quite have the pace of um, of James Cotting. He doesn't have the experience, but uh, uh, but this car's new to them, pretty much new to them, and uh, we will see. Of course, in the Lotus, we've got owner Michael Birch going the middle stint, and the very quick um, Richard Bradley mm. to take it over. And he was saying this morning how much he adores historic racing. Yes. Uh, after um, after the day job, the sort of modern. Uh, racing, he, he shared with Sophia Sophia Flush. Uh, oh, last right. weekend. Yes, that's so it was right. Yeah, absolutely yeah. magnificent. Yeah, she's she's uh, yeah. one of the quicker moving drivers. She doesn't go in for W Series type. She does the proper racing. Not the women only series. Well, she was the one who had that uh, horrific accident or spectacular accident at Macau. Had, like, absolutely horrendous accident. Bounce back from it extremely well, I have to say.
Healy and uh, Kova running side by side down Hangar Strait. You'd have thought there was only one winner of that drag race, but it strangely wasn't the AC Cobra, which now has Papa Henderson aboard, doesn't it? And that's the 450 yes. uh, Healy going really nicely in the hands of one of the Mortimers. Yes, do we know which sport Mortimer started? Uh, Mortimer J uh, was the starter. Jonathan. Right. And that then number 450, just following it up. In 11th place, it has gone well uh, and has yet to make a stop, though. Two Cobra Roadsters together white and yellow 361 pressing on that car's made its first stop I think hasn't it oh no, no it hasn't it's in fifth place yet to stop there goes uh, John Clark out into the fray here's Jaguar E-type Yes, yeah, so 361, which we were seeing there on the screen, that car still in the hands of Nick Sleep, who started the race in it, uh, and is currently fifth place, yet to stop. But the leading pit stopper... Uh, yeah, it's, it's the Kent Ward E-Type, number 88, which made that very early stop under the safety car. Now, uh, after its pit stop for Dario Franchitti to hand the car over to to uh, Gregor Fiskin, the number 60 type has dropped down to 21st place. But we're going to see this yo-yoing up and down the order for loads of cars because of the way in which the pit stops can uh, unravel Marcus. Gregor Audi um, Cobra there with a little bingle in the rear um, right corner. A little bit too close attention. 44 and the uh, and the Morgan there having a good little tussle. 44 Jaguar uh, E-Type. That's Simon Drabble, Drabble. Yep. unless it's had a pit stop. And in from uh, fourth place, George Pochol in 144. He's driven a great uh, stint. of the Potchell boys, Paul the father, George and Tom the, the lads who race. Yeah, 44 started by Drabble, it's, it's had a pit, its first pit stop. Yeah, it's just gone in and uh, so also in a Julian Scri Draper, yeah. The Scriver um, Elan is now in. It's 149, the Shapecraft Coupe. Well, the driving rotation for that car sees... It's Wilf driving first, wasn't it? Yeah. Michael in next, ex-FIA right. uh, thoroughbred uh, Grand Prix car champion. Driving at 72, and a big moment for uh, the, uh, 93, Andrew Wenman in the Morgan, but he gets it all sorted out. Is the Triumph TR4... Was its pace just slightly reduced? It didn't look to be going at full racing speed. You're right. No, it's, I think it's broken. I think there's a, a, a problem for the Triumph TR4 of Daniel Ross Jones. Well, at the moment it has the appearance of a car heading back to the pit. It's going to get yep. there, but not much further. Yeah. There's Chris Ward going just across shot. And that car, number 88. Get the screen. 88, now 10th. Chris Ward doing the long middle stint, I assume. 
In fact, last time around, Chris has done the best lap for that car. The fastest lap still to the credit of James Cottingham in the number five, Costin Lister Jaguar at 2.26.403. He's currently lapping in the 2.26s, only a fifth of a second off that pace on his last What's lap. It? Is he, what, one lap or two laps behind the leaders at this point? Oh, sorry, I was still talking about number five. Who, 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 which one? The car of Ward. The Ward Jaguar. A lap behind. A lap behind. This is the uh, sleep <laughs> Cobra bounding through club with uh, the 69 of uh, Cullen behind. That'll now be Paddy Shovlin, won't it? Has it not been in yet? Lock up. Oh, and uh, Harry Canary kicks a, a wheel into the air going through uh, Abbey. Well off the deck. Let's see if we watch the angle of Dangle again going through here. Ooh, bounce, 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 bounce. Yeah, 69 yeah, has been in and it's now being driven by Paddy Shovlin. Who's just let the Yellow Cobra pass again. Now the yellow cobra number is here. It is going down towards Brooklands. That's the car that's running in fourth place. Sleep, Montgomery, and Wickham. He has yet to stop. Another new fastest lap from James Cottingham, two thirty-six point three one two. The Healy there, great looking car, number 450. The uh, Healy 100, this will be Jonathan Mortimer handing over to Paul Mortimer. Also in is the number 144. That's George Potchkill and his. Uh, Replacement will be, we reckon, Matt Wrigley in that car, number 144. Watch for a white and green helmet. Well, that's going, going strong all the way through from the almost from the nether regions of the grid, certainly the Lotus 15. Uh, and it's half a minute now behind the Lister Jaguar of James Cottingham, which is just going quicker and quicker. But to be fair, a big uh, sports race of the 1950s against a two litre sports race of the 1950s. It's going to go to the big one. But neither of those cars has yet stopped the two leading cars, nor the third placed Jeremy Cottingham, number 66, E type nor the yellow cobra number 361 in fourth place or in fifth place we now have uh, number 84 which is the reed gom andrew keith lucas car who started that one that i believe was reed gom it was 84. another canadian driver like ian douglish 44 is um, is going nicely the trouble and draper Jaguar had a great battle with uh, the second driver in Ben Gill's Cobra, which is uh, Ian Dalglish. Yes. Isn't it? Yes, Julian Draper has taken over from Simon Javelin, number 44. Yeah, Simon Travel's lad did some Formula Ford, didn't he? Um, Alex Travel. Yes. Also comes out occasionally in Historics. Had a Reliant Sabre 6 at one point. That's right. A little bit fed up with it um, breaking. Oh, and 72. That's the Cook and Stanley. Uh, Cook and Stanley, is it? Cobra. In trouble? Yes. Cook and Cottingham. Yeah. Or Cook and Stanley. Cook and Stanley, according to the list we were sent from organisers earlier on. Well, whoever it is, it's now parked. And there's a recovery vehicle you can see on the screen. Heading off to get stage it. right here. Go and collect it. That's um, Andy Jordan in the 27, isn't it? This car started by its owner, Royals Slade, uh, sometimes a netter racer. 
Yeah, well, it's in 14th place at the moment, so there's a lot of work for Andrew to do over the next hour. Uh, the number 84 E type. That's Reed Gom. I think into the pits has come the yeah. 77 Ford Falcon, Can't which is uh, Alan Greenhouse. And oh, three stop strategy for the, um, the wider land, number 26, Fox and Pink. Yes, yeah, talking of the lands, it, I think that the. Maybe it's another one. Maybe it's another one. Miles Griffiths got oh, it, it, it's sleep in, isn't it? Number yep. 361. Sleep in, that's from fourth place at uh, 28 laps. He's driven a super stint. He has. Dyna Glazer for why, Marcus? What do you know about them? I think they make car polish. <laughs> Gives the impression that they do, doesn't it? Like Nigrin Autoflager. I wouldn't know about that. So what are we doing with that Jaguar there? Changing the uh, changing tyres? Well, it's certainly jacked up. Just need to see where Chris Ward has gone. Down in 16th place, so that's made its second stop. How much longer have we got? 140. It's going to have to make another stop, isn't it? I'd say so. Yes. Well, you, you can't drive for more than 80 minutes, 85 minutes, and that's more than 85 minutes. You can't have more than 85 minutes between the spots. Yeah, it stops exactly. Yeah. There's uh, Jordan, and uh, behind him the uh, the Shelby, which was started by uh, Adrian Wilmot. 22. Car he's bought with uh, one of the Alexanders. Yeah, so I think our hopes of number 88 have been a little dashed. I mean, they obviously know what they're up to, but uh, to make its second stop now, when we thought the first stop was a, a cunning plan, makes you wonder how they're going to manage their, the need for their next stop. They're in 20th place. It's in the pits at the moment, actually, number 88. Sixty-six car. Got new news from the um, from the pits from Lewis Beals. Sixty-six car. There. Uh, is driven by was driven by Harvey Stanley um, at the start. Not what we were told originally. Okay. So he's done all that work and uh, hasn't received the praise for it. That's no, you really what, only go on what you're told well, by, the, uh, as you, by yes. the officials of the meeting. So Harvey Stanley, that's news from Lewis. Thank you, Lewis. What else can he tell us? There's some more. Um, 82 has an oil leak which is under repair, apparently. And that is the um, Osborne Osborne Ward and Smith car. 82 Ian? Oh, the Lotus is in. Yes, Lotus is in, 160. And that's 82 is the Steve Osborne, Chris Ward, Rob Smith, yeah, Porsche 911. Yeah, that's an oil, uh, uh, oil leak. They're trying to sort on that one. Um, and there's a couple more little bulletins as well. Um, 160, yeah, um, which had the Lotus 15. This one, Lotus 15. Yes, that's um, that had just uh, water system issues. It's going like a bomb, they say. <laughs> well, it's being topped up. Is that oil or water? Water, isn't it? Water, I think.
Not that, a lot that, to that, that'll, that'll, be, that'll be fuel going into that yeah. one, but um, it's had some, um, some water system issues. So that was the car that was running in second place. Obviously, it's going to lose out, perhaps only temporarily. It was 41 seconds behind yeah, it was a, the leader. It was a water pump issue causing some overheating, but that's cured and it's going really well. And 88. Leader comes in. So after, apart from blotting his copybook on the opening lap, James Cottingham into the pits from the lead of the race, a comfortable lead of the race, a 42nd lead of the race as he heads down the pit lane. Yeah. 88 has had a problem with its steering column, which is the Kent and Ward car, and, um, and they're replacing it, apparently, or have replaced it. Back out goes the Yellow Cobra, which Nick Sleep brought in. And it's now going to be driven, we reckon, that's number 361. By uh, Montgomery. By Montgomery, yeah. By Alex Montgomery. That's Elan that we see behind the... Oh, we're not going to see it behind the curve, but it's the ex-Jackie Oliver car, is it not? Maroon Elan? That's another one, no. Oh, it's a different one, right. And that's Max Gerardo in the blue helmet. We saw him in a rally Porsche at, um, uh, at Goodwood, among other things. So that's the lead car in at 31 laps. Fuel going in. So we've got, in fact, the two leading cars in the pit lane with the Lister ahead of the Lotus, but the Lotus should be able, if all is well with the car, be able to leave before the Lister because it's a five minute stop. animated discussion going on. Yeah, some psychology going on there. I think there? so, yes. Yeah. Psyching himself up. And that's uh, Barrichello getting into the, um, the Lotus. Michael Birch with his Rubens Barrichello crash helmet. It's his car, isn't it? It's his car. Yes. Right, meanwhile, back on track, there's DD300, the famous Austin Healey 3000. Yep. Started by Carsten LeBlanc, now driven by Christian van Lanschart. That was another early stop, it wasn't under the safety car. Yep. So that actually had two stops. Yes, it has. Oh no, sorry, reading the wrong line. No, it's only had the one early on. Well, we'll, we'll uh, wait till the orders settle down a little after this round of pit stops to give it to you uh, there is hardly a car in fact there isn't a car that has yet to make a pit stop some have made pit stops for reasons unconnected with it being a mandatory pit stop but I think you can say that everybody has now made their first of two mandatory stops the Cullen Shovelin Cobra running hard DD 300, David Dixon, the Curie Chilton car. Looking strong. There goes uh, Michael Birch. Out in the Lotus. Yeah, you may think that his head is above the rollover hoof, but of course, in period, the car didn't have a rollover hoof at all. There you go. And here's the, uh, the glorious Porsche, and that's uh, Andy Prillitz, preparer, driving it now. over in uh, in Halstead in Essex called Porsche Classics he's uh, chasing down the uh, 27 Cobra yeah I think we're going to need another 
couple of minutes or so for another lap, actually, and then we'll get a, a feel for what the relative positions of everybody is. That's Max Gerardo, just bolting him in. With his Henry Hope Frost fever oh, yes. window strip on his visor. He's raced this car before, presumably. I don't know that I've seen them in oh, it before. Right. But that's not to say they haven't. No. Uh, I wasn't at, uh, at Spa recently where they were. Max Strider, another uh, purveyor of, um, of fine automobiles. It's a good way of being able to afford to go racing one yourself. I was going to have done it about 30 years ago. I was just ago. thinking that, Marcus. That <laughs> but I wouldn't have had the you've pleasure got of sharing the commentary box with you. You've got your Formula Ford Merlin. No longer, sadly. Oh, it's gone, has it? Yeah. Oh, right. Right, so uh, Michael Birch then in the Lotus 15. I don't think we'll see quite such spectacular handling of the car as you saw from Gareth Burnett. Andrew Jordan, meanwhile, has brought the number 27 Shelby cover up to third place. Here's Max Gerardo out number five. Don't think he's going, as you were saying earlier, I don't think he's going to match the pace of James Cottingham in that car. We'll see. I mean, Cottingham's best lap is the fastest lap of the race, isn't yes. it? On a two... It's a 2.26.312, the fastest lap. And the best lap by the Lotus... 15 a 227.142 by Andrew Jordan a 226.959 in the number 27 Cobra so Jordan right on the pace as you'd expect yes out of the cars in the front group they're, they're much the quicker so they're also going well it's Matt Wrigley now isn't it in the 144 Cobra and he's just on that car's best lap so Matt Wrigley is perhaps one to keep an eye on. That car currently in fifth place. But quite a bit of ground to make up on the car immediately ahead of him. And of course they do have um, Oliver Bryant to uh, finish off. As their secret six, weapon. So yes, yes, indeed. If indeed you can have a Spa Six Hours winner as, as a, a secret, secret weapon. That's quite an RAC TT celebration. A Goodwood winner. And by the same token... Greg Fiskin going through in his uh, set. There's uh, Michael Birch. Yeah, it's a very historic car, that, as you were telling us yesterday, mm. Marcus, but it unfortunately looks a bit scruffy after it's... We've got a chance now to hear from the chap who was helping us with the commentary yesterday, uh, Harvey Stanley. Oh, Thank you very much, Ian. Yes, you're right. We've got Harvey Stanley. Harvey, hmm, third place overall and first in class. Absolutely stunning session. Yeah, I enjoyed that. We started, uh, I think, ninth, uh, and it was sort of hectic first couple of laps. I did a couple of comings together in front of me, uh, and uh, then it was sort of two or three of us took a bit of a lead from the pack, uh, and then I got past the Daytona uh, Cobra that I was battling with, uh, and I, I really did not expect to be leading the race uh, bearing in mind we're not in the we're not in the fastest class, so I knew I wouldn't stay there. Uh, James actually came through in the Lister, and then the little Lotus 15, and then I sort of settled into a bit of a groove. And and uh, the last sort of 40 minutes, I was sort of on my own, but trying to build that um, class lead, which I think was at about 40 seconds when we came in. How can? Well, let them go by. How come you could get past the Daytona? Was talking to Dario uh, uh, a few minutes ago. He said they're a bit too quick for the E types. Yeah, well, normally they are, but I guess we'd, the boys have got the setup right. Because it's not dry out there, but it's by no means wet. I mean, it's dry on the line, but it's greasy if you put any sort of foot off. And even where it is dry, it's, it's low grip. So we were running a bit of a hybrid hybrid setup, and that's probably what's what, what enabled us to punch quite far above our weight. Yeah, I was going to say, I think, you, I, I think you were actually mistaken for Jeremy to start with. And everyone said it was huge large and uh, how well you were dry, or how well the car was going. You were behind the wheel, so... Yeah, you know, good for you. Well, yeah, um, that's my fault. I changed the plan at the last minute, so sorry to uh, Marcus and Ian for that. I do apologise. Um, 
But no, we, I, I put him in the car now and he'll do the second and third stint. So he'll double stint now to the end. So uh, I've, I've given him a car in good shape and a bit of a lead. So no pressure, Jeremy. OK, then, Albie, thanks very much and good luck for the rest of the race. Thanks very much. Thank you. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Lewis, for listening to that apology from Harvey. Yes, <laughs> he, he was good to have up in the commentary box yesterday, but uh, yeah, he did confuse us. But, but he's admitted, Marcus, it was his decision at the Indeed. last minute. Indeed. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And uh, But some of these teams play games, you know, don't they? I know. They, they do like to uh, uh, confuse their rivals. And they certainly confused us because we were just going what we were told by the officials. There we go. Anyway, we now know uh, that um, that car will be now driven by... Uh, Jeremy Which, Cottingham to the end, uh, the uh, car number 66 that's running so well, the pre-63 spec uh, E-Type, the Huffaker uh, car, and here's Max Gerardo. You can see some of those little kind of slightly damp patches still that, um, that Harvey Stanley was talking about uh, there, and uh, we'll see how the, um, the lap times compare between Gerardo and uh, Birch. Uh, once they get sort of into their um, into their rhythm. Now, who do we have down for 72? Because that was, oh, it, it's uh, a Cottingham, isn't it? Who's going to take that car over? Not well, Harvey. Well, 72, we were told, was going to be um, Cook to start with, and then Stanley, who's his regular Cook's regular co-driver. Of course, that um, that car broke, didn't it? It was off at the side of the circuit, so uh, it may be that it's still oh. broken. Yes. Okay. So he doesn't got a car to drive. Well, up front then. So uh, we can hear from, from another star of the race so far, James Cottingham. Lewis? OK, Th thank you, Ian. Anyway, it's really hard to hear when some of those cars come by. James, yeah, we're back, we're, we're live. Anyway, you just jumped out of the Lister and uh, you had a nice lead there. Yeah, it was uh, quite an exciting opening lap. I think I started seventh. And this weekend they've run the rule, it's go on the red lights, not when you cross the line. So I just pulled out, just went for it when the red lights went out and yeah, managed to get P1 sort of by turn one or turn two with Rory, you know, he outbreaks himself and, and I thought well, I've got this under control and then into uh, the complex in front of the BRDC, I did the left and then into the right and I just slightly too deep and the car's got so little lock that as it rotated, I hit the lock stops and that was it. I'd gone completely round and I was watching the whole field go past because it's got so little lock, I had to put it in reverse and go on the grass to do a three point turn. So it was a bit of a battle from the back of the field and just before the safety car came out I caught up behind the two Daytonas or behind Harvey I saw the safety car come out so I thought oh that's annoying they haven't picked up the leader and then I thought oh no Harvey's leading the race brilliant that's a good DK effort and then after the safety car came in just picked through the guys and got my head down pulled out a 15 20 second lead and then just sort of was easy on the car because it's a 50 sports car and as I was going around, I was just thinking, this is so good. Why aren't there more 50 sports cars doing this race? You know, when I was a kid, that's what I used to watch racing so much. And it's really, really cool to be able to do such a long stint in an old car like that, because we don't get to see the races in them anymore of that sort of length. Well, yeah, but I, th I think you've covered everything we need to. Huh? So uh, are you going to go back in for the second, third session? Or is Max going to do a double stint? Well, I was due to jump in a Cobra, but the Cobra, unfortunately, has broken down on circuit. So. You know, yeah, we're leaving our options open. We'll see how Max gets on, um, see how his pace is. It's his car, so I'd love him to get the most um, enjoyment out of it. But if it's looking a bit close, I might jump in for the last stint. You never know. OK, James, thanks very much. Before and, you uh, go, good luck Lewis. For the rest of the day. Thank you very Lu much. Cheers. Lewis, before you let him go, oh dear. Tell him I think Max has just spun. He's under pressure. <laughs> OK, thanks very much. Back to you at the studio. Th thanks, Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, as even as you were interviewing the first driver of the car, owner of the car, James Cottingham, so Max Gerardo was having a spin. But did you pick up which corner it was, Marcus? It looked like Stowe. Right. Oh, that's a bit quick. Right, well, focus once more on Max Gerardo now at the wheel of the number five car. And we'll check out what the gap is. Now, Michael Birch is going to be the slowest of the three drivers in the Lotus 15. Andrew Jordan, of course, is still hammering on in the number 27. Cobra Coupe. And in fourth place is Matt Wrigley, who's no slouch in the number 144, Shelby Cobra Coupe. And behind him in fifth place is 66.
which is the the Cottingham Stanley car now in the hands of Jeremy Cottingham. Yes, of course, that spin has uh, put in there for a slow lap by Max Girardo. His lead over Michael Birch, 48.9 seconds, but 20 seconds behind Michael Birch is Andrew Jordan in the number 27 Cobra Coupe. Catching in a rate of knots. Oh, Andrew Jordan. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, Andrew's lapping. 228.4, Michael Birch 234.9, Max Girardo 239.6. With the spin. That included the spin, yes. So the car to focus on now, I suppose, is uh, is Andrew Jordan in the number 27 Cobra. But uh, Matt Wrigley's not hanging about either. He's just done the best lap for that car. Number 144 in fourth place. He is 34 seconds behind Andrew Jordan, though. Another car making up. Yeah, Rob Hall is always a good value in a Cobra. Rob Hall is now in the number 31 Cobra in sixth place. He's just had the car's best lap, and he is, in fact, second quickest driver on the track at the moment. He's going to catch Jeremy Cottingham in the number 66 E type very soon at this rate. Yeah, Max Girardo's next lap was a 2.30. Rob Paul reeling in Jeremy Cottingham for fifth place. And Birch is in the Lotus, back into the pits. Oh. Now, this could be scheduled, because there's less than 85 Absolutely. Minutes. And uh, Richard Bradley will be into this. Good spot. We're just a, a minute and a half into that, aren't we? But it's a five-minute stop again, isn't it? It has to be a five-minute stop, that's right. It won't need that much fuel sloshing in, will it? Indeed not, no. But with a long stop, it doesn't really matter. But, yeah, Richard Bradley's there just walking over to the car, so this is clearly the plan. Gareth Burnett and Richard Bradley, both quick drivers. Richard, a... Uh, Pro driver in the European Le Mans series. And in comes the Ford Mustang, the blue Mustang. That's the Squires, isn't it? Richard Squire, Michael, who you got as a start five, driver for that? Five laps only um, by uh, Birch there. At the Squire car was started by Michael Squire. Thank you. Yeah, they're, they're Michael Birch, remember yesterday, uh, he was going to share the car with Richard Bradley, but when Richard came in after starting the race, he stayed in the car. So Michael, very happy to see his car do well. Historic car that it is. If it means he doesn't get to drive it that much, well, the car will get the results. Now that looks Let's like... Stop the, and go. The, the Irish car. Is it? Is it? Uh, or is that their pit? It's right at the very end. It's sort of down by where the, the stop and go area is, isn't it? No message about stop and no. go. OK, good. Let's hope not. Cut seven. Have that engine change uh, overnight. And it's what? Uh, Dick Prothero car. And we had, uh, we were told, didn't he? Lewis told us something about that car's problem. Yes. Um, that had a steering column issue, That's didn't it. it? It's down in 39th place, so it's out of the running now, I'm afraid a shame but they had their their result yesterday well obviously with the, this pit stop by the the lotus the pressure is relieved on max Girardo for the moment andrew jordan 12.7 seconds behind the lotus he'll, he'll pass it next time through so that'll put andrew jordan up into second place 
but still some way behind the leading car, Max Girardo, who's lapping around two, two and a half minutes, 2.31 last time. So about three or four seconds slower than James Cottingham in the car. That's uh, 144. Matt Wrigley pressing on well in the white Cobra Coupe. And that is moving him up because of the pit stop by the Lotus uh, up into third place. Richard Badger looking very serious about the job in hand. DD300, that's in again, I think, isn't it? Because we've talked about that car coming down the pit lanes yep. more than five minutes ago. That's another driver change over looks of things. Will Carl that be getting Carsten it? LeBlanc be getting back in, I think. That's going to be its second stop, I think. It made the first one very early. And here's Andy Prill coming in with the Porsche 904 Scuderia Filippinetti car, George Filippinetti, the Swiss private, uh, privateer entrant. So the car that raced at Le Mans. Finished 11th at the Mall, 4th in its class. 1964. You can see where the Chevron B8 styling came from, can't you, uh, Ian? The Chevron B8? The Chevron GT styling. It looks very much like a, sort of a smoothed out version of the, uh, the Porsche, given that the sides of the Porsche are sort of slightly bulbous. I'll kind of take your point. <laughs> but the Chevron is just a brilliant shape. I know we have a. Could we have a Chevron in this race? No, I don't think they'd be eligible, would they? No, um, too no, new. Too new. So there's Andrew Jordan on screen in the Cobra Coupe. TVR's headed into the pits, the red TVR. Bradley out with him, uh, an hour and 18 minutes to go. They've obviously done their sums, haven't they? Because that's 78 minutes, which of course is less than 85. The, um, so as long as the Lotus stays reliable, it'll get to the end. A bit smoky, the elite, wasn't it? It might have just been a locked wheel. Well, for the moment, then Max Girardo has the pressure off. He's still lapping comfortably at 2 minutes 30. Consistent lap times. Obviously, the Lotus has dropped down the order because of that second and final pit stop. So second is now the 27 Andrew Jordan driven Cobra Coupe. He's a minute and three seconds, a minute and three and a half seconds behind the leading lister and lapping four seconds a lap or three three seconds a lap quicker. Well, Max Gerardo, you can see on the screen, seems to have uh, settled into the race now. And that lap was, a t again, 2 minutes 30.8. So anything in the 2.30s seems to be quite comfortable for Max Girardo. As long as he doesn't blot his cottage up, then this uh, should be the winning drive, the winning car. Rob Hall, in, yes, Rob's just done the best lap for his car, which is now in fourth place at number 31 Cobra. 227.167. Not quite as quick as Andrew Jordan, but pretty close. Second quickest driver on the track at the moment, Rob Hall. That's Matt Wrigley in the 144. Shelby Kirby Lieutenant Coupe. 
31. That's Rob Hall. And the gap between 144 and 31 is half a minute, 32.147 seconds. And they're lapping at a similar sort of pace, actually. Matt Wrigley's last lap was a 227.59. Rob's last lap at 227.16. So slightly quicker, but not much to choose between them. Just lapping the bonnetless MGB, Rob Hall, down towards Stoke Corner. Locking the brakes, car snaking under braking. Well, I suppose if it's a cover, it's going to snake, isn't it? And the car that started from the front of the grid, Rory Butcher has brought that delayed E-type into the pits that had that drive shaft failure. Yeah, Rory's about to get back in for the finishing stint over what for him will be about an hour and ten minutes, won't it, given it's a five-minute yes. stop again. Andrew Jordan, unrelenting pace here, 226.640 is his fastest lap and it's very close to the fastest lap of the race by James Cottingham in the list of Jaguar. James Cottingham's fastest lap at 226.312. Andrew Jordan is just under 226.640. And then we'll all just later get back into that one, won't he? I think I saw cut seven creeping into the back of the uh, pit yeah, lane there. Did, yes. But I think Andrew's got some time to spend on the track still. Very, very definitely. Clearly his... Uh, his mission is to get the lead of the race before he has to make his pit stop and hand the car back to its owner. Man on a mission. Indeed he is. Through Stowe Corner he goes. And not only driving very quickly, but also, and on the limit, but very neatly and tidily. Comes through to complete another lap. And what sort of time? Uh, the fastest lap of the race. The fastest lap of the race by Andrew Jordan, 225.652. And the gap is down to less than a minute now, 54.5 seconds. Can he keep this up? He's lapping nearly four seconds quicker than the race leader. But he's going to have to hand back to Roy Alderslade, who's clearly not an ex-BTCC racer or a current BTCC racer. No, he's, uh, he's OK, but he's not an Andrew Jordan. No. Former VTCC champion, of course, uh, Andrew Jordan. Stood down this year from driving. Felt that uh, at, at his stage in his career, it wasn't right that he had to go around drumming up sponsorship to get a drive, buy a drive in the VTCC. There he is through Brooklands, followed by the Porsche. At this rate, gaining at four seconds a lap, he's going to need... 13 laps-ish. 13 laps. Has he got 13 laps? 13 laps at 1 minute 45. No, I think he's going to have to... I think he'll run out of time before he can get the lead at this current rate doing some quick mental arithmetic, which I won't divulge because it could be wrong, but <laughs> I think it's about right. But it's great to watch. Andrew Hill is reveling in this car, which he has raced, of course, already this year. Just uh, lapping the uh, Austin Heat 100. And of course, he has to make another stop. Uh, imagine that the uh, leading car also has to make another stop. John Clark coming in, number eight. He has to hand back, presumably, to Gordy Much. It's one of the Valley Motorsport uh, team crew. Yeah, yeah, seeing the stop. 
John climbing out, Gordy hovering to take over. John Clark Motor Group overalls. As an alternative, much motorsport than overalls. There you go. John Clark's um, dealership spread over Scotland, Aberdeen, Dundee areas, and uh, represent many marks. From Hadrian's Wall to John O'Groats, perhaps. Indeed. Yeah. The, I don't think the dealership at John O'Groats does a lot of business. On his next lap, actually, Andrew Jordan wasn't as quick as that new fastest lap of the race uh, and only brought the gap down another couple of seconds. It's down to 52.7 seconds now between the leader, who is just consistently turning in laps in the 230s. 2 minutes 30, 2 minutes 30.3, 2 minutes 30.2. It's what you expect from a consummate pro, though, isn't it? The car, if it's working yeah. well, yeah. he can be super um, consistent with it. In fact, Max Dorado's been very consistent with the, um, the list around yes. Trump, just not matching Jeremy Cot uh, uh, James Cottingham's times in it. Um, but you wouldn't expect that. Well, we're watching the progress of Rob Hall. He is 22.7 seconds behind Matt Wrigley's covert coupe and lapping two seconds quicker a lap. So he'll need 11 laps. He might be able to do that. Now, Richard Bradley, of course, out in the Lotus 15, number 160, just taking it over. That car's dropped to 12th place. But most of the cars ahead of it have yet to make a second pit stop. Uh, those that have, that's the John Clark, now Gordy Much, E Type, number eight, and the number 26, Lotus Elan, the Fox Pink car. They're obviously going to be slower than the Lotus 15. Well, the weather, the weekend may have started off with some grotty weather each day, but certainly now, Marcus, it's turning out for the time of year, end of October. Clocks having gone back, very pleasant, really. Indeed. Autumnal afternoon here at Silverstone, home of British motor racing. I was just sort of watching the, the, the pictures and thinking, well, the circuit is in as good condition as you could wish, apart from the occasional little bits of water, dampness, but uh, it looks in almost perfect condition. Ready for the Walter Hayes Trophy next weekend. Max Dorado thundering down Formula towards, Ford uh, yeah. towards Beckett's, meanwhile. Sliding the list of Jag Costin through. Yes, he's clearly got into the swing of things. As you say, not quite as quick as James Cottingham, but he's in this consistent 29s last time round, wasn't he? Just into the 29s, 229.7. But another new fastest lap by Andrew Jordan, 225.647. The gap's down to 48.69 seconds. Rob Hall not hanging about in the Cobra as he comes charging past a load of slower cars. Rob 24 seconds behind the 144 Matt Wrigley driven Cobra. And a chance once more to hear from Lewis. Lewis, over to you. Oh, thanks very much, Ian. Yeah, just trying to just trying to find you and we've got Gareth Burnett Gareth you started the 160 Lotus mm, yeah good real good stint and uh, you've done your two stops so I suppose it I suppose technically that puts you in the lead um hopefully so I'm not, not quite sure of the final detail but it looks damn close yeah well your 14th when I looked on the um on the timing screen be the first of the two stoppers five, a five minute stop plus in and out that's about two laps so it's going to be close very close yeah yeah yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, what was what were conditions like this morning? Uh, oh, sorry, the start of the race. Um, there were slightly there down patches, like very greasy in places. Uh, you just had to be a bit careful. We started right at the back P36. Like by the third lap, we were P10, MP6, MP2, 
Um, but the car was just absolutely stunning. The car was an absolute pleasure to drive and the sun was shining. Um, I really had a lovely hoot of a time out there. Because Richard Bradley's out, in the, to, uh, out now because you've done your two stops. He, he ran it in the Stirling Moss Trophy but ran into problems when he was leading on the last lap. Yeah, we had a problem the last lap. The car died. Uh, the temps were, were high. Um, it was uh, the old pump drive shear. We didn't realise. We changed a lot of things overnight. Um, then we went qualifying this morning and it was overheating again. That's when we sort of stripped the water pump, fixed it with just a sheared woodruff key, fixed that and uh, it's all mint. Well, that's great news. Good to see you, Gareth. And uh, OK, and th thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Back to you in the studio, Ian. Thanks, Lewis. Good to hear from Gareth then. Uh, and uh, the progress of the order. We've got a slightly curious feature on the screen at the moment. Uh, in the, the leader is shown as having done 41 laps, and the cars that are in second and third places are shown as having done 42 laps. But there can only be a glitch in the system, I think. Anyway, the gap first to second, assuming that five should have been credited with 42 laps as well, is 45.6 seconds. Another lap in the 25s, though, by Andrew Jordan, 225.896. So that was uh, four seconds quicker than Max Girardo. Now through he comes and goes through the timing beam. And he's shown us having done 43 laps. So 41 goes up by one lap to 43. Uh, and all is well. And Max Girardo bringing his times down into the 28s now, 228.6. Still three seconds slower, though, than Andrew Jordan. And to focus on the Lotus for a moment, Richard Bradley now in 10th place in the Lotus 15, number 160. And has just done, Richard Bradley has just done that car's best lap of the race. Not the fastest lap, but a 226.981. One of the quick young professional drivers who enjoy their time in historic racing one sort or another. He also races in historic Formula Junior, which he wins with quite regularly. So there's Andrew Jordan having a ball, I think. He's probably got a big grin on his face as he passes cars on just about every corner. But all done a world away from the crash bang wallop of the British Touring Car Championship. Gap down to 44.3. That was a slowish lap by. Andrew Stanners must have been down to traffic at 227. He still was quicker by a second and a half than Max Girardo. Now, uh, what about the gap third to fourth? Matt Wrigley third in 144. Yet to come through is Rob Hall in fourth place, or yet to be shown on the screen in fourth place. Rob Hall. There he is, 22.5 seconds behind. Lapping a little bit quicker than Matt Wrigley, but not that much. This is the Frank Kitty car, isn't it? So Gregor Fiskin brought it in. Marino Frank Kitty will now finish the race in it. There's a minute, and, sorry, a minute, an hour and two and a quarter minutes remaining. So we're nearly at two thirds distance. And we'll attempt to run down of the order if we don't get distracted by something happening on the track at the one-hour mark. Big light flashing going on by Andrew Jordan as he comes down towards Stoke Corner up behind the Ford, the blue Ford Mustang, number 22. And yeah, what was the order for that car? Third. Yeah, so at the moment in it, number two, uh, the second driver, I mean, Mark Farmer. So we should be into a whole space of pit stops over the next few minutes.
Andrew Jordan, 42 seconds, 42.4 seconds behind the leader. Down the pit lane comes the white Porsche 911, number 59. That's the car of the Mahmouds with James Turner. Do we have an order for them, Marcus, on your list? No. There, so Galal Mahmoud should be bringing the car into the pits. And hang it over to James Turner. Well, there's our leader then coming into club corner. Max Girardo has done excellent job so far. Fast, safe, had that one early spin, but now he's got used to the car, the conditions going well. The third to fourth gap. 20.5 seconds. I don't think, yes, I think Rob Hall's pace has now slackened rather. And he doesn't seem to be catching Matt Wrigley anymore. A good shot just then of the cost in Lister. Car when it appeared in 1959 with the body designed by Frank Costin. Didn't go down too well with the drivers accustomed to the what's become called the knobbly Mr. Jaguar. It's a bit bulkier. Didn't really enjoy quite the same success, possibly partly because Archie Scott Brown had been killed and he was the famous Mr. Jaguar driver, but always of a knobbly, never got to got his hands on a costing car. Another new fastest lap by Andrew Jordan, 225.500. Gap down to 38.3 seconds. So still it comes down at the rate of at least two seconds of lap. The, um, the 69 uh, Cobra has been uh, kind of sitting there worrying uh, Gerardo for the last lap, pretty much. And uh, that's, uh, that's flying along. That's the uh, Cullen yeah. uh, and uh, Shovelin. Yeah, it's uh, Paddy Shovelin. Oh, has it been in it's been in twice, that car. In which case, it's Sam Tordoff driving. Yes, the pink helmet of Sam Tordoff. Yes, it's been uh, in twice. Yeah. So uh, Tordoff now driving that one. It's in 13th place. But it, Oh, there's the blue Mustang slowing it's, down. He's in a cone is underneath it. That's Mark Farmer, I think. I think that's the that's the Squire car, isn't it? Looks like the uh, the Squire family car. Uh, 221. Uh, oh, not 22. Okay. No, 22 is a white Shelby. Right, so it's the Squires. Okay, well, the order then, in the lead number five, Max Girardo in the list of Jaguar. In second place, about 38 seconds behind, number 27, Andrew Jordan in the Shelby Daytona Cobra Coupe. In third place, number 31, is the Shelby Cobra Rob Hall, pressing on. In fourth place, number... That was, um, the, it was the um, uh, Matt Wrigley, but I think that stopped, hasn't it? Yes, Wrigley stopped. Yes, so in fourth place, number one... Uh, can't be number one. In fourth place, number 66, is the now Jeremy Cottingham E-Type Jaguar, ex Harvey Stanley. In fifth place, number 361, uh, in the hands of its second driver at the moment, but so soon to make a pit stop to hand over. So 361.
currently being driven by Alex Montgomery with Joel Wickham waiting in the wings to take it over. In sixth place, number 144, Matt Wrigley. That car's now stopped, so it'll be going over to Oliver Bryant. In seventh place, number 500. That car has had only one stop, so at the moment it'll be the second driver at the wheel. Ben Gill started in Dalvleesh then at the wheel of it currently. And then in eighth place, number 160, is the Lotus 15, Richard Bradley driving. In ninth place, number 26, is the Lotus Elan. of Chris Fox and Nick Pink. I think it'll be Nick Pink and Chris Fox will be taking it back at the next stop. In 10th place is 55, which will be due shortly to stop Mark, uh, uh, sorry, Martin Melling to hand over to... And is now coming in. Oh, there it is on queue. <laughs> Jason Minshaw will take that car over. In 10th uh, place, well, it won't be 10th when they leave the pits, obviously. In 11th place is number 69. Sam Todoff now having taken that car over, the uh, red and white Shelby Cobra Coupe. Better lap for the chaser, Andy Jordan, now 32 seconds behind. He's taken a bunch out oh. of the, the new fastest lap of the race. When I started giving these countdowns of his fastest laps, one after the next... Uh, oh, and the 17 was... Cobras spun and stopped. Henderson... Got going again. Cars going again. Yeah, when I started doing these laps of Andy... That's the Gavin Henderson, Rory Henderson, Cobra number 17, uh, of uh, Andy Jordan they were in the 226s or 227s even he's now down almost into the 224s 225.059 last time through how many more laps does he have well and we have a gap down to under half a minute now 27 seconds 27.672 seconds. Slow lap there by, by his normal standards, by Max Girardo. It was a 2.33 into the pits. is the 80-80 type. That's the one that's had all its problems, the Richard Kent, Chris Ward car. Kind of lost track of who's driving. It's, it's Richard Kent back in it now. Screen overalls. Be, yeah, it's Richard it's, Kent. I saw his crash Kent. on it. Right. 17 Cobras made it back to the pits after its spin. The Henderson... Family had an early spin, didn't it? First yes. lap or whatever the race. It looks as though they've. Oh no, are they going out again? Cut seven. No, pushing it away, I think, aren't they? Gets back into the pits. And in terms of time, we've got just under 53 minutes to run. The car we haven't mentioned, so let's do so, because it's uh, leading its class, is the Lotus Elan number 441, which has been going nice in the hands of uh, Robert Barry and Steve Monk, regulars with the Historic Sports Car Club in the Gas Trophy and so on, but uh, they are now 13th. So Matt Girardo, here he is. The gap down to 27.6 seconds last time through. Traffic for Andrew Jordan to negotiate as he comes through Luffield. So this won't be one of his fastest laps of the race. As he was going through uh, Beckett's, now he's coming down the hangar straight and into Stowe Corner. Something's getting a bit squealy in my ears. And into the pits, so the uh, exhibition of fast driving by Andrew Jordan is coming to an end. And the car go back to its owner, Roy Alderslake, because Father Mike, Andrew's father, decided not to take part. But the leader, of course, still has to make a stop as well. A second stop. The Sleep Montgomery Wickham uh, Yellow Cobra has caught uh, right up with the um, Jeremy Cottingham Jaguar in that little tussle for fourth and fifth places. That's Montgomery, isn't it? Yes. It hasn't had its final stop yet. Yep. 
and Nor has the Jag ahead of it, in fairness. So Andrew Jordan is out of the car and will be replaced by Roy Alderslade, another former Ginetta racer. I guess he won the Chairman's Cup Series one year, didn't he? So there's uh, Max Gerardo hurtling down towards Beckett's then through the little left kink at Maggots. Right into Beckett's left and there's a, another right and then the left out on through Chapel Curve onto the hangar straight. What's the history of this Mr Jaguar? I've not seen it before so I mean in, in, I saw it the first time this morning. And, uh, right. So uh, I will ascertain that or see if we can get uh, Lewis to uh, ascertain that. It could be a continuation car. Could it? I don't know that I've seen a continuation cost in, uh, in recent No, they're mainly nobblies, aren't they? Yeah, they're mainly nobblies. Yeah. Tordoff's charging along, isn't he, in the, um, uh, in the Irish well, Cobra? Well, good touring car driver, so he's 10th he's now. He's just done that car's best lap of the race. A 225.424, not much lower than Andrew Jordan, actually. Oh, and there's oh. Uh, Richard Bradley going autocrossing in the uh, the Lotus. Caught up in traffic, was he? He sort of looked across, and <laughs> sort of vague, what on earth is that all about, uh, at those he was lapping. Anyway, he survived unscathed, but it was a bit of a heart-in-mouth moment on the grass, on the kerb. Yeah, Beckett's, he's running seventh at the moment. But that is the leading double stopper, apart from the Aldersleigh Jordan Cobra, which is in the middle of its second stop. Yeah, exactly, which hasn't hasn't emerged yet. But that car has done 40. What the Aldersleigh Jordan car has done 48 eight laps. laps, and the Bradley Lotus has done 47. Yes. So that's going to kind of, oh, there's um, double, uh, double wave yellows uh, and yellow flashing lights. What's happened? Well, that's still for the clearance of the 221, the Squire's uh, Mustang, which we quickly saw there in the corner of our camera. Well, it's still got ample daylight, even though the clocks went back. Uh, and we have 40, just under 48 minutes. Up to second place has gone Rob Hall now in the number 31 Cobra. That car's got to make a second stop, of course. It is a minute and 44 seconds behind the, the, the leader. But it's uh, been going well. Rob Hall, notable driver of Copas and other historic cars, in particular various Matra sports cars and Formula One cars, the sorry, Formula One cars. Yeah, Matt is certainly getting to the sorry, sorry to have to come in. He's certainly in a fast groove now in the leading car. Yeah, he's absolutely no need to panic. He's got yeah. a, um, yeah, I think he's just a good situation. situation. Yeah. Yes, his lap times. Are, oh, there's the going back up by our window. At Woodcut. At Woodcut. We can't see the track. We can see a Mustang on the trailer being recovered. Richard Bradley. Oh, and that's a problem for the Fiskin team. Um, by the looks of things. Yeah, flame out the front, out, out front of the bonnet. And the Lotus has broken by the looks of things. It looks like the Lotus 15 has hit trouble and is out of the race. This is at, at Cops Corner, so he's got some way to go to get to the... It's pretty much where he hit lane. the problem first time, uh, for the first time yesterday. Yeah, a little bit further around the lap, but not uh, that much further. Marino uh, Frankiti trudging away from uh, the... 
Jaguar that's parked up and Richard Bradley's broken. That's two BRDC members gone in 30 seconds. He's trying to get back to the pits. Into the pits has come 151, which was the Wilkinson and West. Uh, Olivia Wilkinson and Richard West. Olivia started it. This is a, a big old uh, bunch coming down yeah. into uh, into club, led by the Henderson's Cobra. Which is a little bit behind, but uh, there is the 144. Daytona Cobra, which is now in the hands of Ollie Bryant, and he's just moved up to seventh place, because of course the Lotus, that's because of the Lotus 15 problems. And the Frankitti E-Type Jaguar, in 13th place, but no more. And here's Richard Bradley, just been lapped by Gerardo. Gerardo will have seen that. And Richard Bradley's just about got himself down to uh, Stowe Corner. Of course, he, yesterday, he managed to creep round yes. Stowe and had to just give up ghosts and, and pull off. That's right. But hopefully, oh, he's uh, made it back. Well, he's nearly made it back. He's just going through Stowe at the moment. And then he gets into the pit entrance road. And it should be possible for Lewis to find out is what's it, gone wrong. Is it just very short of fuel? Or are we still wobbling around as though maybe something's amiss with the uh, the tracking? Maybe he got a, a, a yeah. touch that put him on the grass before. Yes, yeah, it could be that. At Beckett's. Right, well, the ex Andrew Jordan Shelby Cobra has after its pit stop now in the hands of Roy Aldersley dropped to sixth place has it got any more races in prospect this year or they're now going to tidy it up and make it look yeah I think yes, it'll look lovely again yeah. very shortly and here comes the Lotus 15 then of Richard Bradley Yesterday's problem was what? It was something to do with the, uh, the fueling, wasn't it? Um, it was something to do with the fuel switch over, yeah. I think, between the tanks. That's right. Maybe when it went over the grass and you know, over the curbs and the grass at Beckett's. Oh, look at that! The rear wheels all—it's uh, become detached. Something in the suspension yeah. is is very loose. That's Gareth Burnett bobbing the wheel. Yeah, and Richard Bradley getting out of the car. Well, that's a shame, isn't it? Two races where it's gone so well, been one of the centres of attraction, but it's uh, not finished either. Well, back in the day, the Rose 15 in the hands of the likes of Graham Hill and Cliff Allison. And Alan Stacey was the car to have in. Sports, sports car racing, not long distance about much, but the uh, shorter races in the UK particularly. Yeah, same could be said of Lola T70 in sort of um, That's a, right, yes. a decade later. Yes, yes. Very, very good by and large for a, a short sprint race. Um, only won one major um, enduro, yeah. the, uh, the Daytona uh, 24 hours and 69. Yeah. Oh, what's going on here? Is this a Porsche's had a big hairy spin by the looks of the thing. It's going again. The smoke from which he's still settling. So Roy Aldersley then at the wheel of number 27 now and running in sixth place and in the lead is the Max Girardo in the number five costed body list of Jaguar. Second is Rob Hall in the number 31 Cobra. Third is 361 which for the moment is Montgomery, Alex Montgomery, but it'll become Joel Wickham shortly. Uh, fourth is, could be a Cottingham one too, uh, is Jeremy Cottingham in the E-Type number 66. Fifth is number 500, which has yet 
No, it has now made its second stop, so that car has probably gone back to Ben Gill. Six is 27 miles. They know he's certainly gone fifth because of the pit stop by the Gill Dalgleish Cobra. The seventh is 144, now Ollie Bryant in the Shelby Cobra. Eighth is 69, Sam Tordoff Shelby Cobra. Ninth is 160, currently in the pits and will unlikely stay, likely stay there. That's the first 15. Richard Bradley brought in. And 10th is number 84. First time we mentioned this car, actually. Uh, so, number 84, the Reed Gom, and then Andrew Keith Lucas, low drag coupe E5. So that's Harve the Suave getting back into the uh, the E-Type. Into the 66. Got a wallop on the, uh, the copper mallet just to tighten those wheel spinners up. And that's an early spec E-Type. It's not a you know it's not one of the sort of semi lightweight cars that. Uh, later spec yeah. in this race meanwhile Max Girardo carries on out front just coming into club corner less than 40 minutes to go so that car has to make its second pit stop one of the few now which hasn't been in for a second time the Mortimer lost in Healy I think that's just come in I thought but anyway it's uh, yet to make a second stop but everybody else has. Oh, the Jaguar Saloon has yet to make its second stop so, somewhere down the order. A new faster slap. It, it has made its second stop in the gravel. Oh, dear. Uh, and Ollie Bryant has just set the new faster slap of the race at 224.925 in the 144 Shelby Cobra Coupe. So, in the battle between him and Andrew Jordan for the fastest driver of the day, Ollie Bryant's now got it. Yeah, and that car's um, into its last stint now. So yes, not... that's right. Yes, they were one of the earlier stoppers, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's, that's becoming a major threat. Well, not for the win, I don't think, but it's going to become well, a candidate for the podium. Five-minute stop for the, um, for the car the leader. overhead. Well, well, yeah, but... That's two laps. Well, Cottingham and Stanley have made... Uh, Yeah, Joel Wickham's still going to take over number 361, yep. running in second place. In the pits has come, so Rob Hall has handed back to Greg Audi, the number 31 Cobra. Yep. And, and Bryant is going to make up two laps, is he not, on, um, on the lead car? Because a five minute stop is two laps. Yes, he make up two laps, we won't, no, I don't think he can make up the third. At the moment, the lead has done 53 laps, Yep. and Ollie Bryant's done 50. OK, so he's going to make it, yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot closer. I think he's a candidate for the podium, but as I say, I don't yeah. think he'll... Anyway, he's uh, getting the flavour now. I suppose in terms of Copas, we're all used to seeing him in a roadster. Ollie Bryant, 4.50, heads down the pit lane. That's the Austin Healy of the Mortimers. To go back to Jonathan Mortimer, I'm assuming. Max Girardo still pressing on by his pace, 2.29. That was a good lap by the Italian driver. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, Gordy much enjoying himself in John Clark's E-type, climbing down the inside there of the number 17 Cobra, but in fact, that's behind him anyway. Uh, Gordy's next target is, or it's, it's in the pit, so he'll pass that easily, uh, is the Scriver Elan. Which is to go to Marcus Weller. And has gone to Marcus Weller, I think. Yes, he's in the pits. So yet to stop are the two leading cars, numbers five and three six one. Everybody else has made their second 
and final stop, final mandatory stop. Now uh, we've got, yes, uh, number 149, Ilan, now in the hands of Marcus Weller, just done its fastest lap, quicker than the owner. Jason Minshaw is out in 55, that's, that's just done its fastest lap as well. He's down in 12th place in the E-Type number 55, but there's prospects of that car gaining some places in the remaining 35 and a half minutes. That's 66 into the pits. That's the Harvey Stanley car again, isn't it? It is, yes. Yes, back with Harvey Stanley. So it was clearly a problem because they made their second mandatory stop to change back to Harvey Stanley. Roy Aldersley in third place in the car he's taken back from Andrew Jordan. And that'll probably become second when the number 361 Cobra makes its stop. But can Ollie Bryant catch it in the 144 Daytona Cobra? And Sam Tordoff also. Now, Sam Tordoff is lapping quicker than Ollie Bryant. And his 15 point lap to change. So Sam Tordoff in 69 is catching, I reckon, Ollie Bryant in 144. And that gives Sam a chance of bringing that car up to fourth place. Well, it'll become third, actually, because 361 has still got to make it. It's second stop. Uh, as indeed has the leader, but the leader has a lap in hand. There's 31. Greg Audi back at the wheel of it in sixth place. Car that... Rob Hall was driving. Yeah, Sam Tordoff, this is the one to watch, Sam Tordoff catching Ollie Bryant, despite Ollie having set the, the fastest lap of the race a few minutes ago. Marcus Weller in the Alain number 149, the Scriver car, is the best place of the smaller engine cars, the Lotus Elan. Yes, that's made all its stops, or both its stops, yeah. and it's running in eighth currently. That's going to yeah. move up maybe to the top six. Started um, a long way down, didn't it? Um, well, actually, it started in uh, in 16th, I think. 15th or 16th. Ah, uh, now we can hear from one of the stars of the race, Andrew Jordan. Lewis, over to you. Ah, uh, here we are down in the pits with uh, Andrew Jordan. Oh, that's a Porsche coming a bit quick there, Andrew. Andrew, good session. Yeah, very good. Uh, quite long, hour and twenty in one of these, in one of the Cobras is, is quite hard work. So, uh, but we brought it in in class, I think, with a good, uh, good lead. So um, we'll see how Roy gets on in the closing stages. Yeah, you were hunting down the uh, the leader actually. Uh, yeah, bit by bit, putting fastest laps in. You know, um, what's the, what's the car like to drive compared to a touring car? It moves around a bit more. Um, it was one of those that you obviously just need to try and. Um, Catch the traffic in good places, and then initially in the run, I was catching it in, in some bad spots, and then towards the end, had um, had good break of the traffic. Knew we were going to put a pair of rear tyres on in the pit stop, so I could um, use the rear tyres up a little bit. And um, so the first half of my stint was just looking after it, and uh, and then pressed on towards the last part of my stint. Yeah, 
like just watching on, I was watching on the on the stream and seeing you sliding the car through the bends left and right. Yeah, it must be great to sort of be able to drive like that. It is. It's, it's good fun. It's just managing it because you don't want to. You know, if it was qualifying, you, you could press on. You know, you'd probably go another second and a half quicker. But you're just trying to keep the tyres in, keep the brakes in, so it gives something for for your co-driver, in my case, Roy, to, to fight with and, and have a comfortable car under him for the last stint. So the last thing I'd want to do is use all the tyres and brakes up and give him nothing really to fight with at the end. Yeah, and, and Roy, he's the owner of the car, and he, look, he, he, did a, he put a pretty good session to start with, didn't he? He's very new to racing, he's only been racing a few years, so um, it's our first year properly racing with the Cobra, and he's learning, and we've had some good results so far, so um, yeah, we'll see how we go in this one. Okay, thanks very much. Hope to see you at the end. Yes, thank you. Okay, that's Andrew Jordan. Just telling us how things go in the 27 car. Back thanks, to you Lewis. in the studio. Thanks very much, Lewis. So at the moment they are running behind the number 361 Cobra, so they're second in class, but that car's got to still make its second stop. And hand over to Joel Wickham. What's interesting is that uh, Tordoff is now less than 14 seconds yeah. isn't he, behind yes. Bryant, and Bryant is only, what, 25 behind Alderslade. And uh, all those cars racing for position, they're yeah. all on the same lap. Uh, they're currently a lap behind uh, the, two, uh, the, the car that's got to stop the yellow Cobra, yeah. uh, but they're two laps behind the... Uh, so the, 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 the yellow Cobra that you mentioned, 361, when Joel Wickham gets into it, is going to be uh, very much in the mix of that group of cars fighting for position. Yes, provided he can get in and be straight on the pace uh, with uh, just a few minutes yeah, to go. I don't know that, I mean, Joel used to do a lot of racing, but uh, I don't think he does so much these yeah, days. But Brother Bill's done more, hasn't he? In recent times, yes. I remember seeing Joel in the... Uh, Nürburgring 24 hour race in a, an Alpha GTV which he bought for £500. Marcus Weller's going well in the Scriver in Land in eighth place, leading his class pretty comfortably from the Fox Pinky Land. That's not a new shade of red. Fox Pink? Yes. <laughs> no, probably isn't. It's probably a new flavour of gin though, isn't it? Might be. Uh, Jason Minshaw in the number 55 E-Type just on that car's best lap but he's a long way behind the next car ahead of him in ninth place which is the Gil Dalgleish Shelby Cobra so we've had 57 laps now completed by the race leader Max Girardo comfortably clear of the 361 Cobra of currently Alex Montgomery with Roy Aldersley third lapping 231 behind him Oli Bryant's lapping two seconds quicker than that two and a half seconds quicker and Sam Tordoff as we were pointing out lapping quicker than Oli Bryant and he is 12 uh, Sam is 12 and a half seconds behind Ollie. And Greg Audi, the, the cover he's taken back from Rob Hall, number 31, is in sixth place. Seventh is the Jeremy Cottingham. That car came in for an extra stop, didn't it? Yes, it's shown as having done three stops, but it seems to be carrying happily on its way now. That's the number 66 E type in seventh place. And eighth is the very robust lo little Lotus Elan of the Scrivers and now Marcus Weller. The 66 um, Jag has made the extra stop. Yes, it's still that. leading its class. That's yes, the point, isn't yes. it? Yeah. So maybe a, a top up of uh, an oil top up or something like that. We didn't see. Now they've got the recovery vehicle on the edge of the track. Clearly, yellow flags are out covering the Hamilton Strait. But uh, it does look a bit precarious. As the delectable little Lotus Elite number 68 of oh, Mark Gordon, Nick Finberg, and now Guy Harmon. Which is in 23rd place. 
although Guy Harman likes actually shown as one of the drivers, so maybe it's gone back to Mark Gordon, its owner. Very attractive looking little car, the uh, Elite. The Yellow Cobra's in uh, from second place. Plugging fuel in from that churn. Driver obviously not allowed to be in the car while it's fueled. Do we know why it's 361 number? Was that, it wasn't the Hairy Canaries number in period, was it? So there we have number 144 in the hands of Oliver Bryant. Really pushing on hard. And he needs to, because Sam Tordoff is not that far behind the gap 12.7 so on that lap actually ollie was three tenths quicker so he's in a situation of where he could push and how many he's 17.29 seconds behind roy alderslade and lapping four seconds quicker five seconds quicker even on the last lap we've got 25 minutes just under to go, 24 and a half minutes. Yellow flags waving vigorously on the approach to Brooklands, uh, Ian. Oh. Don't see a reason for it at this point. So yellow flag situations might, of course, have an effect on the the chases that are going on when the 361 Cobra rejoins the Harry Canary the yellow car will get a better feel for where these Daytona Cobra Coupes the three of them are likely to end up with about half an hour to go but less than half an hour now 23 and three quarter minutes that was classic the way um, Ollie Bryant lent the Cobra Coupe underneath the MGB going into uh, uh, in Beckett's and set it up for that last uh, run through. Uh, growl past the uh, Shelby Mustang down the hangar straight towards Stowe. Max Girardo, of course, is still out there, yet to make a stop. He's on, his, he's on his 60th lap, isn't he? Yeah. Is he going to stay there to the end? Could be. Well, the car seems to be holding together. Okay. No reason why it shouldn't hold together very well. So Alder Slade's on 57 laps. Bryant's on 57. And, and so is the Four Cobra in the pits. Well. So, so is the 361 Cobra on 57. Yeah. So they've all done 57 laps, all those Cobras. And who's going to catch who? It's 12 seconds back from Alder Slade to Bryant yeah. and 11 back. Uh, from Bryant to uh, Tordoff. Yes. Yes, yeah, so we've got three of the Daytona Coupes up against the Roadster. The Audi Hall car, number 31 in sixth place, too far back to feature in this. Harry, but, Harry Canary 2 is about to leave the pits, but uh, he will he could well be behind Roy Aldersley. He'll be behind all of them, won't he? Because well, maybe. they are halfway around their 58th lap and he's yet to start his 58th. Yes, that, you're right. And the leader, leader is in. in. Yeah, the leader comes in, so Maciardo. Where's James Cotting? Is he going to finish the race or is he going to let Max do so? There's James lurking. In, in overalls background. and helmet. Yes, there he is. Wheel change, I think. Well, they've got five minutes to play with, so... It's not got much of a clutch left in it, but it looks the things. The Harry Canary doesn't want to fly.
One man isn't going to be able to push the Cobra, but it looks as though he, he's succeeded between them. They've got it fired up and he can take it back into the race. That's Joel Wickham now at the wheel of the car, assuming they changed. Very cautiously down the pit lane. Alderslade through into second place, 58 laps. And in a moment we should have Bryant through yeah. third place, 58 laps. 8.2 seconds behind. And Tordoff will be next through yes. also on 58 laps. About 10 seconds behind. Yeah. 11.9, 11 12 seconds behind. Not quite such a good lap for Tord off that one. No, it wasn't. Traffic, probably. Right, so 20 and a quarter minutes remain, and certainly it looks very likely that Ollie Bryant will catch Roy Aldersley. And, and to be fair, Ollie has raised, done many, many, many more races than Roy Aldersley has. He's been racing Cobra since he was a lad, so. Uh... I, indeed, yeah. Well, in his sort of later 30s now. So, a new set of boots on the uh, on the list to Jag. So, one question I think we're going to answer is that uh, Ollie Bright will get second. But the other question is can he be caught by Sam Tordoff in number 69? Still circulating at very consistent pace. Marcus Weller in the 149 Lotus Hill land in eighth place. And behind him, uh, back behind the wheel of the COVID number 500, is Ben Gill closing up and has just done that car's best lap of the race, as has Jason Minshaw in number 55. But Jason's efforts I think are not going to be rewarded by any more place gains that's Roy Aldersley and there is the Harry Canary so uh... a lap down nearly not quite but a lap down I think yeah that He's on lap 58, the other's on lap 59. That's right. So this isn't the battle between them for second place. The battle for second place will be when <laughs> Ollie Bryant arrives on the scene. Ben Gillian, 500, stormed past the 27 of Alderslade. And there's Bryant in the background in the white 144 Cobra. And the gap between those two is 1.5 seconds. Alderslade to Bryant. And Alderslade trying to go round the outside of uh, Ben Gill. That's all that's done is basically allowed Bryant to take a better line through there. And in the loop they are together. A yellow flag's been there for a while. Something must have happened at Brooklyn that we can't see. Yeah. Of course, this is having an effect on the catching up process. New fastest lap, so under the yellow flags, Ollie Bryant set a new fastest lap, 224.648. Last time around. And Sam Tordoff has dropped back, he's 13.2 seconds now behind. The number 144 car. Round the outside at um, at Cox comes Ollie Bryant of uh, Royal Slade. He runs really wide and he's got the two um, regular shaped Cobras ahead of him. And uh, what is Alder Slade going to do? Could get the place back. No, they're, they're stuck in this sort of <laughs> glob of Cobras in the middle of... Uh, I think it's a little unkind, but... A uh, conglomeration of Cobras. Yeah, a, a Basket of Cobras. A basket probably. of Cobras, yes. Yeah. Leading a charmed life there. Oof. As they head down the hangar straight, Ollie Bryant emerges in front. 
Roy Aldersley tucked in behind him and the two roadsters alternate with uh, the number 500 car Ben Gill holding his place for the moment 16 minutes just under to go Ollie Bryant then in, in second place as will appear on the screen in a moment yes there he is question about how he did the fastest lap of the race under the yellow flag situation that existed at exists at Brooklyn and the Gerald Wickham car now number 361 the Harry Canary the yellow Cobra Rose who's down to sixth place look at this half a lap later Royal Deslade still yeah. hasn't cleared the uh, Cobra Roasters but his racing experience is so much less absolutely No, he's doing a fantastic job. Where's the um, where's the Lister? Now, I can see it, um, and one of our other screens. The Lister, I think, is at Beckett's now. Right. What we're seeing at the moment is the yellow flag situation, and wave flags going into Brooklyn's, but we ha can't see Brooklyn's itself. As we look back, can't see anything there. The Lister I sense is about half a lap ahead. We'll get a better feel next time through. So Oli Bryant is in second place. Alderslade's doing a really good job because yeah. um, whether Sam Tordoff now hasn't got any brakes or tyres left is another matter. But uh, well, Sam Tordoff is only five seconds. He's just said the best lap of the race, funny enough, Tordoff. Yeah, so I that? think your theory about traffic was probably right, and yeah. now he's got a clear run on that lap. Uh, so Sam Tordoff in the number 69 Cobra, the red car, red and white car, is looking good to catch two cars ahead of him. Oh, we've got the Ginettas pulled off towards the end of... some, as a, And we can... Uh, we can go over to Lewis again in the pits for an interview. Thank you very much, Ian. Yeah, I could just hear you there. That's Max Schiardo, just got out of the Lister. Really good session. Yeah, really good session. Uh, sort of, uh, James handed it over with a good advantage, so I managed to keep it up uh, in the lead. And, uh, and so far, so good. Let's hope we can bring it home and uh, see if we can finish first. Uh, yeah, it's a fabulous looking car. You've been driving it great, you know. Looks like you've really enjoyed yourself with that big smile on your face. Do you know, I really had a great time. I got out of the car and I told Gary, who prepares it, I was like, it's a great car. It was so much fun. Apart from the racer, it's just been having a great time. I was like, oh, do I have to come in already? <laughs> really good. It's like that, is it? Oh, it was really good. It's like easy to drive. You know, you can sliding everywhere. I absolutely loved it. I want to do it again tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, and uh, obviously you just put a new set of boots on the car uh, for James to finish off. Yeah, feeling good about the uh, the finish? Yeah, we were just looking at the times. I think we've got a good old chance to bring it home in first place. First, but to finish first, first you have to finish, right? So that's absolutely correct. So let's hope we can bring it home. Yeah, you were saying to me, you know, James, you know, that was a long 30 seconds. When you did your pit stop, did that five minutes appear to be sort of like oh, forever? It feels like forever. It's like, are you sure? Did they get a stopwatch right? I've been here for like 15 minutes, but you know, it just feels like it's forever. It's like, Come on, I want to go. I want to go. But uh, yeah, it does feel like a long time when you're sitting there. Once you go, then it all goes out your head and. Oh, off you are braking, turning. It's great. Okay, Max, thanks very much, and we hope to see you later in the day. I hope I hope to see you on the podium. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> let's hope, let's see. <laughs> okay, cheers now. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Lewis. Could he be any happier? So, uh, absolutely delighted, Max Girardo, at the prospect of winning the race. They're leading by 47 seconds. There's 12 minutes remaining. But what's happening behind? Well, Oli Bryant is in second place, 47 seconds behind. He is six seconds ahead of Roy Alderslade, who is two seconds ahead of Sam Tordoff. In fourth place. And then the Greg Audi Cobra is fifth. Joel Wickham is sixth in the 361 yellow Cobra. Seventh is... Jeremy Cottingham wants... No, it's gone back to Harvey Stanley, hasn't it? In seventh place. In eighth place... Uh, is Marcus Weller still going great guns in the Lotus Elan number 149 in ninth place number 500 Ben Gill and in 10th place number 55 Jason Minshaw I think we just saw yes we just saw uh, that's torn off ahead of Alderslade with Ben Gill in the middle of them so that's a new third place car 69 yeah so ahead of torn off yeah so he's now going to pursue Ollie Bryant 
for the remainder of the race. There's Bryant in 144. Sam Toloff is ahead of Alderslade. I think we saw just yes, then. Yes, we did. Yeah. Yeah. So there's Ollie Bryant turning through Abbey. Number 144, the white Daytona Cobra Coupe. Pan back and we should get a sight of the Sam Toloff, the red and white Cobra Coupe. Certainly we should be able to see them as they head down Wellington Strait. Just lapping the E-Type Jaguar number eight, uh, which John, I think John Clark has taken back from Gordy Much, who did the middle stint. That's much, much to Clark, to much. There is the Shriver, Marcus Weller, Lotus Elan just going past us at Brooklands. So there's the second place car gone out of camera now. Here is the third place car. I think it's a bit too far back, isn't it? It was 8.9 seconds at the start of the lap. Got nine and three quarter minutes. So Ollie Bryant in second place. Not caught on that last lap by Sam Torloff. Ollie was slightly the quicker. We're all just laid number 27 down to fourth. Fifth, Greg Audi's Cobra. Sixth, Joel Wickham in the number 361 Cobra. Seventh is Harvey Stanley's E-Type, number 66. Eighth is Marcus Weller in the Scriver, Elan, number 149. Ninth is 500, Ben Gill. And tenth is number 55, Jason Minshaw. Left with nothing to chase, really. Whatever he does, he won't gain another place by overtaking anybody unless they've stopped with the problem. So 69, Sam Tordov. Heads down. Hanger straight. And somewhere around club, I imagine, is the leader. Uh, is the car he's pursuing, the second place white Daytona Cobra. Right, well, through has gone the second place car, Lee Bryant, number 144. And in a moment through will go Sam Torloff in the red and white car. And the gap has gone up, it's 9.2 seconds. Gone up by another three tenths. Well, it does rather look as though Ollie Bryant has the answer. This is subject to anything that's said about the fact he's got the fastest lap under the yellow flags. Great reliability has been shown, very few mechanical problems, they're having a few, but considering the age of many of the cars, all right, they're prepared to the highest standards these days, but nonetheless, they've been asked for some strenuous exercise during the course of this three-hour race, which is now just seven minutes, 20 seconds from the chequered flag. And there is the leader. Once more, it's James Cottingham at the wheel. Turning through Stoke Corner. We heard his account earlier on of how he had the problem on the opening lap. But uh, that's not long since overcome. And as they complete their 65th lap. James Cottingham and Max Girardo look to be well set for victory. I say 60, 65th, 64th lap. Dr. On Call, number 151, the uh, MGB there, being attended to the Olivia Wilkinson Rupert West car.
said the one or two cars have had to fall by the wayside, in particular the Richard Land that uh, Miles Griffiths was driving so well earlier on that ended up in the gravel at Club, uh, and the Lotus 15, of course, that uh, retired with a mechanical problem. Four laps completed. The gap sank to third, as I said, has gone up to 9.3 seconds between Ollie Bryant and Sam Tordoff. There's Roy Alderslade. Gradually dropping back, but not rapidly, but gradually dropping back from Sam Tordoff. Back to James tore off. That James. James Cottingham going through. There's the bonnetless, as it has been for much of the about half the race. The MGB number two, running without the bonnet. The uh, Tim Dutton, then Paul Judecki, and now Josh Bromley, driving it. The TVR going nicely. In Patrick Watts had a hand in that car. In fact, he's probably behind the wheel now. He's in 15th place, number 47. Yeah, Malcolm Paul and Patrick Watts. Patrick Watts started, and therefore he's finishing. Nice little battle going on here between the Lotus Elite, uh, number 68, which might be Guy Harman, depending upon whether the suggestion was going to be the third driver of the car came to fruition, uh, and the MGB, which gets out of the way, but particularly the MGB number 126, the white car, which is uh, tussling. That's the that's the Guy Harman, Nick Finberg. <laughs> yes, the, the two cars with the same drivers obviously not at the same time uh, are running together on the track and they're going side by side into Brooklyn so the they may be no in fact they're running 21st and 22nd yes so 126, they're going to try and achieve a dead heat, aren't they? So that they're running in adjacent places, 21st and 22nd. The MGB ahead across the line last time. And the Elite behind. And this is going to go down to the finish. I think that because they're the same drivers driving each of these cars, Oh, the uh, bonnetless MGB has had a little moment, but he's uh, going back into the race. Just found out from Lewis Beals in the pitch, it was engine problems that put the uh, put Cut 7 out. Right. The 88 car, uh, Richard Kent and uh, Chris Ward. Yellow flags down there at Beckett's. Yeah, I think it was the MGB, but I yep. think it's uh, gone on its way again. Yes, yeah, Sam Tordoff is now, oh, he's five seconds behind. He's five seconds. There was a slow lap there by Ollie Bryant by his normal standards. A quick one by Sam Tordoff. The gap's down to 5.1 seconds. And we have a, you know, two minutes, or less than that. One minute. So the leader goes over the line now, and this is starting his last lap. Less than a lap time left on the clock. So James Cottingham turns to Abbey for the final time. He's running well clear of Ollie Bryant in the number 144. There it is, coming down into Stoke Corner now. Yet to start his last lap, of course. And pressing on to stay ahead of Sam Tordoff in the number 69 car.
So he goes through to complete his lap. And there is, yeah, Sam Tordoff hasn't given up. And the gap has gone up, though. Six seconds, 6.003 seconds is the gap as they start the last lap. There's no way that Sam's going to be able to narrow that gap in the closing stages in the on the last lap. There it is, no lights ablaze. Sam Tolloff with his familiar pink helmet. And behind them, Roy oldest lady of the car that uh, Andrew Jordan was having so much fun with earlier on. Number 27 running in fourth place. He's, he's uh, comfortably clear of Greg Audi in the number 31 Cobra in fifth. And then Joel Wickham, number 361, is sixth. But there is James Coddingham coming out of Chapel Curve onto Hangar Strait. Hasn't thought it necessary to use the headlights on the car. Just passing the number 44. Cobra. Oh, sorry, number 44 uh, E-Type, I should have said, of Simon Drabble at the finish. So here he comes then. The Lister Jaguar of... James Cottingham crosses the line to win the MRL RAC Pall Mall Cup, the second race in the series of the season, the first being at Donington Park, and an impeccable performance apart from that uh, slightly blotted copybook on the opening lap when he had that spin down to almost last place. James Cottingham with Max Girardo take the win. Second place will go here to uh, Ollie Bryant in the number 144. Daytona Cobra Coupe. Just coming into club now. In the car that also has been, also has been driven. And it's had one or two instances whilst being driven by George Pochkiol. And then it was taken over by Matt Wrigley and finished by Ollie Bryant then across the line for second place. In the end, quite comfortably ahead. There it is in third place, the Daytona Cobra Coupe begun by Michael Cullen, middle stint by Paddy Shovlin and then Sam Tordoff joined in to bring the car home in third place at the end 5.5 seconds behind Ollie Bryant fourth place will go to the here it is number 27 Shelby Daytona Cobra Coupe started by Roy Alderslade middle stint by Andrew Jordan and then the final stint by Roy Alderslade as well And the number 31, Cobra of Greg Audi. Oh, and a little Elan getting it wrong on the last lap. It's a fox and pink car, isn't it? Pink fox car, yes. The best of the small engine cars finishing in eighth place. The Will and Michael Scriver and then Marcus Weller. Notice the land taking eighth place. In sixth place, the big sleep, Alex Montgomery, Joel Wickham, Shelby Cobra, number 361, finishing behind the Greg Audi, Rob Hall car. And then in seventh place, the next of the Jaguar pod cars. So it's a line of Shelby Cobras, either coupes or roadsters, between second and sixth. Then seventh, the E type of Harvey Stanley and Jeremy Cottingham. In eighth place, the Lotus Elan of Will Scriver, his father Michael and Marcus Weller. In ninth place, Ben Gill and Ian Dalgleish. And in tenth place, the number 55 E-Type of Mark Burson, Martin Melling and finally, Jason Minshaw. The eight Jaguar just stopped for some reason coming down to Stowe on the last lap but uh, it's got going again that's uh, Gordy March isn't it in uh, John Clark's car yeah well he ended up in 14th place I thought they were on course for something rather better than that maybe they've had problems towards the end and uh, Gordy March I think has pulled off rather than getting back to the pits but they're getting back to the pits 
It's been a tr beautifully prepared car. It's been driven immaculately, yeah, apart um, from that spin on the first lap. That car, yes, prepared by, uh, uh, by Pearson's engineering, as, uh, as they were just saying, as Max Gerardo was saying on his interview with yeah. uh, Lewis Beals. So a really good job. They are the absolute consummate experts in uh, this sort of car, aren't they? For many, many years, going back to, uh, to John Pearson Sr., doing his uh, stuff with them. Legendary work. And uh, what a great race it's been. And it's finished in just before sort of darkness has drawn a veil over the home of British Motor Racing in. Well, I think that was how it was uh, intended, actually, to finish as dusk descended. So uh, there is the result. Although we only at the moment are showing one of the drivers. Uh, but the winner uh, was uh, the number five, Mr. Jaguar, costing Mr. Jaguar, driven by James Cottingham, then Max Gerardo, then taken back by James Cottingham, finishing in second place the number 144 Cobra of, uh, first of all, George Pochkiel, then Matt Wrigley, and then Ollie Bryant, finishing 46.92 seconds adrift in second place. In third place, the number 69 Cobra, begun by Michael Collin, then taken over by Paddy Shovlin and finished by Sam Tordoff, finishing 52.448 seconds behind the winner. In fourth place, the number 27 Cobra of Roy Alderslade, then Andrew Jordan, and then back to Roy Alderslay to finish it. In fifth place, number 31, the AC Cobra Roadster of Greg Audi and Rob Hall in the middle stint, and then Greg Audi again to finish it with. In sixth place, number 361, the Harry Canary uh, Shelby Cobra Roadster of Nick Sleep, then Alex Montgomery, and then Joel Wickham. In seventh place, the next of the Jaguar E-Types, number 66, or the first of the Jaguar E-Types, actually, to be precise, Jeremy Cottingham and uh, Harvey Stanley. And they finished in seventh place. In eighth place, number 149, Will and Michael Scriver with Marcus Weller in the Little Lotus Hill Land. In ninth place, we've got the number 500, Red Cobra Roadster of Ben Gill and Ian Dalgleish. And in tenth place, Number 55, the second of the E-types, Mark Burton, Martin Melling, and Jason Minshaw. And he finished just under two, set, two minutes behind the winner. Fastest lap set by, in the end, that must have been, yeah, 224 point, that was done by Sam Tordoff, 224.158 towards the end. Yeah, very close. A fantastic race and a uh, great pleasure to bring it to you with DK Engineering and uh, ADP Classic Racing. And... Uh, Let's hope we can uh, go down very shortly to speak to uh, the winning drivers. But uh, cracking race all the way through. Well, with so many starters, I suppose it's uh, reasonable to expect that there's going to be lots going on, and there was. Um, but what's so good is so all the cars, almost all the cars survived. We had quite a few incidents, kept tabs on them, we hope for you. Uh, and there you can see a Curie Ford France on the side of the car. It's not an ex Joe Schlesser car, but uh, Joe Schlesser. There's the here. owner of the car there, Paul Pochol, looking very happy. And uh, among our top drivers, of course, um, uh, James Cottingham and uh, Ollie Bryant, winners of uh, the recent uh, Spa yeah. Six Hours, not see which they started together back in about 2003 or 2004 right. with an MGB. So uh, aspirational stuff. Ah, uh, thank you very much, there, guys, in the uh, in the studio. Here we have we've got James Cottingham and Max Garrado. Well done! Congratulations on uh, taking the overall victory in the Pall Mall Cup. Max, you did a magnificent middle stint. I just, you know, I was really having fun out there. It was just, it was just pure fun. I almost wasn't looking at the board anymore. Well, it's a lie, but I was having fun. It was really fun, really good. Yeah, terrific. James started off. Uh, a bit of a bit of a struggle to start with. Come on, tell us more. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah, the first lap uh, was brilliant until I got to uh, uh, Brooklands uh, and then had a little rotation. Um, watched everyone go by. Not enough lock on the car to sort of get out of it. So I had to reverse on the grass and and uh, get on with it. But um, yeah, managed to just before the safety car at the sort of 12 minute mark, managed to get back up to fourth. And then after that, it was just quite easy to get on with it. And I got my head down, got some good lap times in, and then decided to start. Well, I always look after the car, but look after the car more <laughs> for the owner. Um, and yeah, just so pleased that we can win this race after three hours overall in a 50 sports car, because when I was a kid and I came here with, you know, my family business, you know, looking at racing cars and watching the races, thinking that's what I want to do when I grow up. It was always the guys like Gary Pierce and John Harper, you know, out in these 50 sports cars. And it's just a really good era. And, we, and they've sort of been forgotten in recent years. And 
it just goes to show that they they can show the uh, 60s GT cars how it's done and I think quite comfortably today so um, yeah just really pleased that a 50 sports cars won and really enjoyed it and thank you to Max for letting me drive it and uh, yeah thank you to all the marshals and everyone that's that was here today but especially the marshals as it's been absolutely oh, yeah. miserable all day and I've, I'm sure none of them have uh, have uh, moaned at all unlike us you know I, I moaned when I got a wet arm in qualifying so yeah no just thank you to everyone that um, you know that helped put this meeting on thank you very much James yes Max uh, I t um, how long have you had the car uh, I've had the car a couple of years now um, we did a three-hour race together actually in uh, in Donington but uh, with we just what do we, we we stopped in the last 10 minutes for yeah, unknown 10 reasons minutes ago. 10 minutes ago in the car uh, the car stopped so uh, it's really nice to get out of it and get out in it and you know they're just a pleasure to drive if I, I know it's we're lucky to be able to drive them but they are so much fun these 50 sports cars they slide around they're not tiring they're actually a lot a lot of fun I just more people should experience it okay Max James thank you very much we'll see if we can find somebody else to have a chat to and uh, you'll pick up your trophies from DK engineering uh, shortly here we go here we got Ollie Bryant look there's there he is Ollie we got a quick look where you are. Yeah, oh, second place. Ollie, good stint. Yeah, it was great fun. It was a pleasure to drive the car with George and Matt, and it's, it's Paul, the dad's, dad's car, but he uh, was team manager this weekend and let us have a go. So it was, uh, it was fantastic. They both had great, great stints and stayed out of trouble, and the car was perfect. So, yeah, really, real pleasure to drive. Yeah, yeah, you had to make your way up the, uh, up the order just to take second in the last, uh, the last stint. So uh, what's the car like? Really good. First time I've raced a Daytona. Obviously, I've raced the normal roadster type Cobra for many years, but uh, it was great to drive, and um, you know, really, really, real pleasure to drive it. And you know, fantastic to be here. And what a great, what a great event to end the year with—a three-hour at uh, Silverstone. What's the difference between the uh, drop head and the fixed head? Um, well, I think they're probably a bit better in the high-speed stuff. You know, when it took me a few laps to get my head around it, but it, it was a fantastic thing, and you can see why they why they built them in the day because they're a little bit better than the than the other ones. But uh, yeah, it's good to see a few of them out. Yeah, I believe Jack Sears was the first to drive one, wasn't he? Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, he's responsible for the speed limit, isn't he? Apparently. But. <laughs> well, that's the key. Uh, it's Matt, isn't it? George. Oh, George. I beg your pardon. That must be Matt then. George, great stint. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a bit slippy at the start, but the the car came good and. Uh, I've only really been driving it for a year, so I'm just learning. But yeah, it, it seemed all right. You couldn't learn off someone better, could you? I think we had a very fortunate team for the weekend. We weren't sure about entering it, but I'm glad we did. Yep. Okay, Matt, how'd it go? Yeah, brilliant. Um, again, came out for the first, um, well, the second stint, um, and hadn't really driven it in the drive than two laps the other week. And so just trying to get used to the car and bring it back home safe, trying to get past back markers and not do it too aggressively really so as you end up you could end up in the gravel or anything which other people did um, but no it's great such a great event great car and uh, thankful to be able to drive it this weekend yeah it looks like it looks great and uh, trouble is can't catch that lister can you no it went, it went well i think um, i think at the end we, we were probably george and i probably a bit off the pace with against Ollie. we had a bit of time to make up um, and i think the, the difference was maybe that but then also we brought it to the finish and then they, that's the most important thing with these things and i think we've done it we had a couple issues with the car and we got it sorted and now we're here at the end which i think we were all happy with yeah you're such young guys as well we're driving these cars you know they're not like in the day is it you know <laughs> yeah no well we're trying to keep ourselves out of trouble but yeah I'm not sure I manage that one or not, but. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you very thank much. You. Well done. Congratulations on your second place. We go with third place is the '69 car. Here we go. It's the Irish contingent. See, we come along. Let's come along, guys. Yeah, you're up. Uh, who's up? Sorry, Sam. 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 Oh, yeah, Sam. Yeah. Congratulations on third place. Thank you. Yeah, it was a good race. Um, Michael and Paddy left me with a long stint at the end, so it was it was about... Yeah, yeah but you're the pro driver, that's your job. Well, I'm supposed to be, I'm not as fierce as I used to be though, so an hour and 20 minutes was a long one. Um, but yeah, yeah, good race, um, first time in the car, never driven it in the drive before. Have you really? So jumped in it on uh, Friday for the first time in the wet, and um, yeah, yeah, left the pit lane this, just this afternoon in the drive for the first my first experience, and um, really enjoyed it, really good race. Yeah, yeah, fabulous, and uh, yeah, that was great to see JT, uh, CEO, JCT 600 back on the track. Thank you, thank you, and just a big thanks to these guys, you know, for for, um, for allowing me to drive with them. Who's Michael? Michael. Oh, my Michael. Michael. Hi, how are you? Yeah. G good race. Um, Sam had a wonderful stint at the end. We nearly caught uh, the 144 car, just five seconds off, which is not bad after three hours running. Uh, so a great event, really enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, Paddy, did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, we had a good one. Unfortunately, we, I had a power cut for 15 seconds in mid-race. Had we not had that power cut, we'd have got P1. 
Any, any idea why? No, I may have hit the switch, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that truth comes out, guys. But yeah, this guy did you proud, didn't he? Yeah, fantastic. He's done an amazing job. Yeah. And uh, can be back again, guys? Absolutely, as often as we can. Well, that's great to see, you know, you journeyed over from the, the island. Well, actually, I live here. I've been here for a long time now, but Michael's journey. Oh, yeah, come over. Yeah, F fly home tonight. Work at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well, that's what we all got to do, isn't it? Anyway, thank you very much, guys, for... Uh, for putting on a terrific performance and uh, that's third place in the Pell Mell Cup so thank you very much and uh, we've just now got to throw back to the studio to Ian and Marcus. Thanks Lewis thank you very much for the uh, interviews all throughout yesterday and today I hope you kept dry most of the time uh, well there we are Marcus that's it darkness descends over Silverstone uh, we've still got one more meeting at Silverstone of course to come the Walter Hayes Trophy next weekend so it's not the end of the Silverstone season just yet but uh, it's been a, a, despite the weather we've had an excellent time I think I think the weather made it very miserable for the marshals yesterday morning and yeah. today uh, not so clever for those in open cars in both practice sessions but the mm. racing has been exceptional right across the weekend it has. It's been superb. And uh, many thanks to Motor Racing Legends and Motorsport Vision Racing and SVR who were organising the racing itself. And of course, the marshals, without whom it wouldn't be possible to have these events. So, guys, the drivers already thanked you on behalf of us and the organisers and MSVR and M Motor and, Racing and Legends. And DK Engineering Thank and ADP you. Classic Racing. Yeah, mentioned those as well who, who made it all possible to uh, hear the, live streaming. the streaming line. Thanks very much. So, it's for Marcus, goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. And um, enjoy reading about it in the magazines in the week. And for me, goodbye.